very good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship of 2016. And our edition this weekend comes to you from Winton Motor Raceway, the Woodstock Winton Super Sprint. And today is race number 11 of 33 for 2016. We had a cracking race yesterday for race number 10 of the championship with a snapshot so far. Only one driver has put together a couple of wins. Everybody else is in singles, and a new name was added yesterday, Mark. Fantastic result yesterday for young Tim Slade. And this team, Brad Jones Racing, a local Albury, northeast Victorian team, a local test track for this team, and the squad were elated. So was this young man, 30-year-old Tim Slade from Adelaide. Look at his face as he's on the podium. He's had 11 podiums. He's the 73rd winner of all time in V8 Supercar and Australian Touring Car Championship history. And what a performance from young Tim. And he is a standout young man. McLaughlin, as you can see there, currently leads the championship for the first time in 30 years for Volvo over Winkup, Lowndes and Winterbottom. So it's really tightening up. A lot to play out again here today. Let's hear from yesterday's race winner. So, Slade, congrats again, mate, for yesterday. What a fantastic result. Great to see you up there for your first one. And then backing it up, not quite with pole, but with a good uh, second row start for today's race. Great for the confidence. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, yesterday was really, really awesome. Uh, I think that's probably the, the best day of my life and, <laughs> and probably will be until you win a Bathurst or a championship or something like that. So definitely something I've uh, yeah looked forward to for an extremely long time. Awesome to, to back it up today, although you do get... It's amazing how greedy you get in this sport. How um, quick you get greedy too. Exactly. You know, last race meeting, you know, back all year, I would have given my left you know what to be fourth on the grid so um yeah no it's uh, it's a great effort from all the guys it's super close and uh you know hopefully our, our race car is, is strong again today and through a bit of strategy we can uh get up a couple more spots and i mean another win would, would top it off to be a uh, an awesome weekend but uh another trophy would be would be great have a great one mate thanks mate <laughs> Tim Slade, fantastic performance yesterday. Let's focus on our destination this weekend on the Virgin Australia Departures Board. And we've lobbed at Winton, northeast Victoria, between Wangaratta and Benella. Beautiful countryside around here. We've had a gorgeous weekend. We're bathed in sunshine again. It's reached its top of 21 degrees. Here are the stats that matter for this racetrack. It's been resurfaced. That's the big talking point. It's very easy in terms of bumps. It's gentle on the brakes around here. It's now got a lot of grip, but it's got a very low average speed and you only use about one third of the lap at 100% throttle. So you've got to really get the car to handle around here. Heaps of second gear corners. Cars must turn neatly into those 90 degree apexes and apply the power. They'll have to get that working this afternoon for a long journey around here for 200 laps. Andrew Edwards is being attacked by the minions down there at the moment. It'd be better if it was millions, but uh, they did a wonderful job yesterday. He's the senior engineer for Brad Jones Racing and Team BOC. They got the job done yesterday. It will be busy in the pit paddock and the pit lane. Greg Rust and Greg Murphy are there together with Rihanna Crean. Craig Lowndes, a much improved qualifying session today, but great race pace yesterday as well. Well, we did have good early pace in the race, but we faded too early up, sort of mid to end of the race, which was uh, more than we expected. So we've made some changes, but of course, obviously, the ultimate thing is to qualify close to the front. Of course, you uh, mid-pack, you are more high potential of being involved in accidents, although we got away with it. Um, but yeah, today looked much better. We, uh, we went out, we made some wholesale changes overnight. Uh, Ludo pulled another rubber out of his bag, and, uh, and of course, uh, you know, the car was really good in those second and third sets of runs in qualifying. So let's, uh, let's see if now we can put some uh, points on the board. Any time you're doing an 18 around Winton, it's, it's quick and it's cool. Well, it is now. The car hooked up. The first run, um, it was quite a snappy oversteer car, and uh, as I said, Ludo made some changes. It hooked up in that middle run. The last run, I made a little mistake trying to find that extra little tenth, but uh, of course, it was still good enough to start third. And, uh, you know, what a great day, long race. Strategy is going to play another big part. Good luck, Craig. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Kiwi bro, Fabian Coulthard, um, mate, awesome job after yesterday. I know you were pretty frustrated with where you started that race. Much easier to be looking at the front with no cars in front of you. It certainly is. Um, you know, it was a good turnaround. So hopefully we can capitalise on today and uh, come home with a trophy. Um, the car difference, I mean, what did you get hold of yesterday, uh, today uh, versus yesterday? I made an error in qualifying yesterday and you know, it, it cost us pretty bad. You know, I started 15th and you know, you're in that riffraff and it's, you know, it's very hard to come away with a straight car. So no one else to blame but myself, um, but we rectified it today. Okay, mate, good luck. Cheers.
Well, at the end of qualifying today, it was a pretty dejected-looking James Courtney in uh, in pit lane. You're well down here. Give us a sense of how you feel and just why it didn't hook up, why it's not going to plan. Yeah, it's just gutted, mate. It's uh, you know, we're here to here to win, not to qualify 20th or whatever it is. So it's uh, yeah, massively disappointed. Um, yeah, just gutted. So uh, going to try and work it, sort it out. Typically, the car's been pretty good over race distance. So uh, both. Uh, Garth and myself here locked out the tenth row, so it's uh, not not the, not the row we want to be locking out. So uh, yeah, a bit of head scratching, um, but yeah, so just got to work it out, mate. Really, thanks, James. Cheers. Just having a quick relax down here at the back of the S60. Is uh, Scotty? Hey, mate, this is your fiftieth event. I mean, that's cool. that's come around pretty fast. Come around real fast, Murph. Um, look, it's uh, been a whirlwind through the years and I've um, really enjoyed it so um, and I couldn't be enjoying myself even more now. Um, and we, I think we, we, you and I talked about it earlier but uh, leading this championship too, it's a pretty good feeling. I mean it, it's so tight at the front. I mean we've had you know all these winners, nine winners from ten races. We could see an 11th today. Yeah for sure. Look um, Chaz and Fabs are fast at the front there and um, look we're, uh, we, we struggled a little bit in that qualifying session and just didn't quite get it but you know, I wish it was December because leading the championship but uh, <laughs> it is um, it is what it is and we're just got to get on with it but um, take every race as it comes yeah one or two to come good luck mate thanks mate cheers Michael Caruso supercars is always very much a family sport and this is really cool brand new helmet design and it's been designed by your children I believe yeah look um, I was really lucky that uh, my helmet painter asked uh, he uh, he let my kids literally paint my helmet so he gave him some brushes and um, and as you can see here <laughs> when you get up close and personal they've um, it's definitely painted by a bunch of kids which is cool and it's got their handprints on it so um, yeah very very sentimental helmet and um, uh, it's pretty cool that um, you know I guess it is family sport that we have so to share that with my kids here is um, is really nice. But you're not going to be offended by the fact that the girls are, they're actually more excited about the fact that there's minions here on the grid. Not so much about your helmet. <laughs> I'm surprised I can't hear them on the TV. They 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 were losing it before when they saw them walking around. So I didn't think they ever saw, thought they'd see some minions at the racetrack. So um, <laughs> and someone else screaming over here. So yeah, no. Look, it's always good fun in V8s, and um, this is a great part about our sport. We get to enjoy and. Everyone gets to get up close and personal with us before the start of the race. Thanks, Michael. Good luck with the race. Thank you. We do enjoy ourselves in our supercar racing, and we'll do it up north as well pretty soon. Castro Edge, Townsville 400. We'll be going to Reed Park once again for the perfect mid-winter escape for the family and all supercar fans of all shapes, sizes, and ages. We're going to have the stadium super trucks on show, the Disney fun zone that you saw a few moments ago. These things are wild. They will put on a great show and rock and race returns as well. The Saturday super top for Ice House and Choir Boys. It's July 8, 9 and 10, ticketech.com.au. There's also a chance to win a hot lap at Townsville. Includes tickets, flights, accommodation, car hire valued for 14,000 bucks. Take a photo of what your face would look like if you were having a run with a hot lap in a V8 supercar. The funniest the better. That's Scapey on the left, by the way. <laughs> Upload your headshot to Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag HotLapHeadshot and uh, see whether or not you can join us up there in the sunshine. That's going to be a heap of fun, Scapey. Looking forward to going up there in uh, July. Right now, our focus, though, is race number 11 of the championship, where there is an extraordinary half a second covering all 19 cars in the initial part of this grid and it's a full one second covers the entire field it's crazy second cloak the closest uh, qualifying gap from first to second it's only 30 centimeters on the road extraordinary run from Chaz Mostert to Pip Fabian Coulthard and Craig Lowndes it was one of the best qualifying sessions we've seen huge pressure for the start now and for Chaz, he's actually moved that armor or pole position, uh, position tally, I beg your pardon, on to three of those now. That's and right. uh, we've been talking all year about how hard it is to try and find emerging patterns in this field. But there's some interesting square up. So you've got an all forward front row with Chaz Mostert. Fabian Coulthard will be alongside him. Remember, those guys have not yet recorded a victory. And we keep tantalizing you with the prospect folks of will there be another name added? And it keeps on coming true. We'll eventually <laughs> run out of them. But we've had nine of them so far in 10 races. Uh, Lowndes has also done well and Slade on the next row of the grid. So uh, it certainly looks like it's going to be a beauty. So we are preparing now for the National Anthem. Our singer today, 14-time Golden Guitar Award winner and former racer, Adam Brand. 
Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing. Advance Australia Fair. Well done, Adam Brand. Great to have him here. Sold over half a million albums. And he's a mad motorsport fan. He's actually driven a Ford Ute in V8 land around here. And now to another mad motorsport fan. Here's Neil Crompton in the Hino Hub. Mark, I'm somewhat puzzled as to what's going to unfold this afternoon for race 11 of our championship. So I've jumped inside the Hino Hub and we'll have a look at our race facts to understand what's going to go on. It's going to be a tricky one to read for a whole variety of reasons. But first of all, let's track some facts in the background before we come to Winton. Been coming since 1985 and touring car championship rounds, 28 of them so far. Glenn Seaton and John Bauer have ticked all the boxes for wins. We've got a new crop closing in on those numbers at the moment. History is always our guide. ProDrive have got form here and Most has just scored another pole position. Last year they were the dominant force. Our race facts for this event, 200 kilometres, 67 laps. It's going to require something in the order of up to a couple of hundred litres of fuel. Usable fuel in these cars, 110 litres. But the rules also require that you chuck in 120 litres of fuel. That doesn't fit into here, so you've got to do it at least twice, and you can do it how you wish, as you know. We've revised this number down slightly from yesterday after we got modern data from race number 10. It's about 2.9 litres per lap. So you can fuel up race uh, lap number 30 and race all the way to the end of this one to the chequered flag and get home. So you will start with around about 80 litres of fuel. The considerations that we need to think about here, the track is super fast and the tyres are not wearing because of the new resurfacing. Safety car prop is about medium. We didn't see one yesterday, but these are the things that we need to watch and think about for the way in which this race is going to play out today. Traffic management. Tim Slade, Freightliner, gave everybody a lesson yesterday with a good start, clear air and bye-bye down the road. They disappeared. Early first stop, I think, is going to be a pretty important thing to do. I'd be inclined to get that first drop of fuel out of the way. Get it done and then watch what everybody else does and react with your second pit stop based on the people that you're racing. You must avoid this. Congestion in the pit lane or obviously double stacking. And if you stop and think about what happened to Will Davison yesterday in race 10, they had a problem with the right front tyre. Cost him six seconds, buried him down the order. And you can forget the undercut. It's not working here like it did in Perth. They tried it for Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske with Fabian Coulthard and they came up with zeros off the back of that one. So let's have a look at our strategy here and we'll plot the red starting with about 80 litres. Remember this is 110 up here all the way out to 67. You'll do two stops. I'd be inclined to get the first one done pretty early in the game, making sure you've got space in the tank to be able to do it. The second stop, you can play with it. The tyres are not a drama. If you had some fresh tyres for down the loaded side of the car on the left side, might give you a yield, but you're going to have to react to the people that you're racing. Really hard to try and figure out how this one is going to play out. What I can tell you is there's a strong probability of a couple of new names potentially at the top of this one for new race winners yet again adding to that crazy list if you have a look at the way in which they ended up after qualifying. Chaz, mate, you are starting to rack up some pole positions, mate. Uh, I think it's the third for the year and it's the fourth one here at Winton. Three last year, one on this, one, uh, this year. Great job out there. It was a super lap you did. Yeah, super tired. Obviously, the new service, everyone's really close. But, um, you know, it really goes credit to the, the team here to, um, with the Super Cheap Car. We, we worked hard over at the end of practice and, and not, you know, we didn't quite have it yesterday, Quali. So, um, yeah, really fast, the car, and it was faster during yesterday's race. Just um, just started a bit too far back. So, we'll see what we can do today. Hey, we've had uh, all these winners from such a few amount of races this year. I reckon uh, this, is, this is the day for you to add yourself to the list, eh? Oh, no, me and Fabs, we haven't got one yet. So we're both starting at the front, so we've both got a good chance. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. I'd hate to get to the end of the year and not get one with how many winners we've got so far. Good on you, buddy. Thanks, guys. 
and might just Good sneak luck, in man. here. There's David Couchy and the boys that look after Jamie Winkup back on grid position eight for this one. Longer race today. Does that mean you've got a little bit more that you can try strategy-wise, or is it uh, is it a case of just trying to bring home as many points as you can this afternoon? Uh, yeah, when you when you qualify poorly, it's always it's always better to have a longer race for sure. So um, guys did a good job yesterday. Not that, not that means we're going to do a good job today. But uh, yeah, we've just got to get a good strategy, try to get a few cars if we can, because uh, we don't want to be back here at the back of the tent. I sense that you're flat, mate. Is that more to do with the qualifying outcome and just how that went and how critical it is at a venue like this? Yeah, yeah we, try, we, we just got to qualify better, you know. We, we're qualifying poorly. So um, yeah, we just need to do a better job. So, um, but it's all about the 200k race today. We'll, um, we'll try to get up there and make a race of it. Always a hard mark. OK, get them. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Rick Kelly, milestone event for you, 200th Supercar Championship event. Um, does it feel special to have these milestones racked up? No, nah, it feels special to finish on the podium and win races. So today our focus is that I haven't thought too much about the 200th. I think when you finish racing and you retire, you look back on you know, how many races you did and what you achieved. But right now we just want to get, get the heck up the front. <laughs> you were strong yesterday, though, finishing fourth, qualified well. The car's strong. It certainly is. Look, we had a few small issues in qualifying that really didn't allow me to get the most out of the car. Had we have done that, we would have been right up the front. So certainly the car that the guys have given me is capable of being up there, and that's our job in the race now, is to get from seventh to first. It sounds pretty easy, but on this surface and in this competitive sport, it's actually quite difficult. So just got to try and offset ourselves in the pit uh, strategy uh, there and then just see if we can do it. Good luck, Rick. I hope you can celebrate this milestone weekend today. hope so. Thanks a lot. Cheers. The key or the hallmark so far of Mark Witterbottom's title defence has been the fact that he's been putting away those championship points. He did that yesterday with another podium finish. A little further down the grid today, grid five or row five, I should say. Um, is it a case of just trying to bank more today? Um, it's tough. This track's so hard to pass on now, but uh, Carl was, was really good on entering quality and really bad on exit. So um, track's changed, the conditions have changed, and we didn't get it enough uh, on there. But a tenth of a second is about six grid spots. So it's pretty tight, but... Yeah, you go racing, that's what we do. And if we can move forward, that's the aim. Um, try not to move backwards, that's, uh, that's the goal. Good luck. Cheers. Chaz Mostert on screen there, Super Cheap Auto Racing. Here's the pole sitter, qualified down in 10th. Mark Winterbottom, Mark Scaife, that's a long way down. Yeah, I don't think he can win from there, Neil. That is a long way down. His car was very good yesterday. Looked after its tyres very well, but it's so hard to pass if you're that far back. I don't think you can win if you're outside the top three rows. So that's the view from his car. And they'll have to contend with the sun later on this afternoon down there into one and three as well. Let's learn more about tackling Winton Raceway. Our show for the GoPro Hot Lap is Clipsal 500 winner Nick Perkat. He's making the V8 music and it's lyrics by Gregory Murphy. Well, we had a problem with that item. Apologies, folks, but uh, we'll try and get back to that. That's looking down the side of Tim Slade's car, Freightliner Racing. So it was funny, Brad Jones came into the commentary box after qualifying and Mark and I both remarked to him, well, were you happy with that? And he said, no. <laughs> Based on what happened yesterday, our expectations are now a lot higher. All right, we'll have a crack at it. Take two. Let's have a look at this wonderful GoPro hot lap with Greg Murphy. Well, good day, everybody. Welcome aboard the triple two of Nick Perkout, the Lucas Dumbrell Motorsports Avro Commodore. We're going to take you a lap thanks to GoPro around this Winton circuit. Just on three Ks as he heads down now, just touching the limiter into turn one. Tricky little complex, one and two, using a little bit of curve. Very important, as you can see, the footwork there from Nick exiting up over the curves at two. It can be a passing opportunity if you make a little error there. Nice and smooth into three, making sure you get the apex. He was a little bit wide. And then up against the curve on the exit of three. A small break for four.
triple two with Nick Perkett. Thank you to GoPro. And Nick has qualified down in 25th on the last row of the grid. Green flag, warm up, love, uh, sorry for the question, love coming soon. Race director Tim Schenken, the voice in the background. Let's have a look at our starting grid for this afternoon. And you can see that Chaz Mostert has grabbed the pole, another armor or pole to his name, alongside Fabian Coulthard. And that's Fords 1 and 2. Craig Lowndes and Tim Slade, it's a Holden row number 2. Then Michael Caruso in the Nissan Altima and Scotty McLaughlin alongside him. And so remember for several of these guys, Mostert, Coulthard, Lowndes, they were buried in the pack yesterday, so it's a big opportunity for them to score. Further afield after the 10th position where it was Winterbottom as Waters, his teammate, then Van Gisbergen made a little mistake at the back end of qualifying. Pye and Holdsworth next in the queue in the midfield, 13 and 14. Pitha and Blanchard out of 15 and 16. Followed then by David Reynolds and Jason Bright. It's a bit unusual for Jason Bright not to fire at Winton. He just hasn't found the sweet spot on that topic. Neither Garth Tander nor James Courtney got those cars to work. I understood that they put some fresh new tyres on the back of the car with an old rotor tyre on the front of the car and the Very balance weird. was way off. So they certainly had their difficulties. That was a great lap with Dick Perk out a few moments ago. Thanks to GoPro. He was out there in the Abro Holden with Greg Murphy giving us the description. So that is your field for this afternoon. They're covered by one second in qualifying. But importantly, again, the top 19 covered by just half a second. Lap record pace for Chaz Mostert on screen a moment ago. Here's Lowndes, 15th yesterday. Said to be spent too long behind his teammate Shane Van Gisberg and won't make the same mistake twice. Going back to the Hino Hub remarks, remember I talked about the fact that clear air is going to be really important today. So you'll pull the trigger on your pit stops based on who you're racing. There won't be anything like the juicy benefit of the undercut that we saw in Western Australia where tyre wear was an important factor and by getting onto a new young tyre you got immediate boost depending on who you were battling. Here's yesterday's race winner Tim Slade. Fans have come from all round across the border and the surrounding country constituencies here. They are a passion-filled crowd at Winton and Murph. The reason for that, we have got an unprecedented and unpredictable championship in 2016. What a competition this Virgin Australia Supercar Championship is. We don't know who's going to win this one, but we've got a couple of blokes on the front row that haven't stood on the top of the podium yet so far. Will we see 10 winners out of 11 races? The chances are very, very good. Greg Murphy, Greg Rust will be uh, reporting for us from the pit lane. Front row of the grid is now set. Mostert and Coulthard, 7th and 17th respectively yesterday. Lowndes finished in 15th, he's third. The guy alongside Tim Slade was the race winner, race number 10. We've had nine different winners. McLaughlin, Courtney, Davison, Lowndes, Perkat, Slade, Van Gisbergen, Wincup and Winterbottom. Well, didn't have the Lexus RCF safety car intervene yesterday. Will it intervene today? We're set. Race 11. Woodstock Winton Super Sprint from Winton Motor Raceway. Weird, weird start for Boston. It was almost as though Coulthard bolted. That was very strange. Totally missed the kick. Coulthard got a great start. Mostert nowhere. And even the rest of the pack wasn't very good. Looks like Coulthard was the only one away. Down the inside now, they're all bumping each other at turn three. Big hit for Waters. Van Gisbergen into the back of Cam Waters. See the damage in the right rear corner of the Falcon, the Monster Energy entry. Hitler has got two in the dirt back there, totally blinding Dale Wood. Here they are in the run to the middle of the circuit at turn five. It's Coulthard from Mostert. That was a bizarre start. It almost looked like the beginning of a warm-up lap. Oh, big hit there. Straight across the curb and into the side of Dale Wood. That was very willing as they come off the change of direction and a big hit there to put Wood out into the grass. It was like they didn't see the light, Neil. It's hard to see with the sunlight there sometimes. And it was it was like Paul Tarp was the only one watching. Well, we'll see whether we can get to the bottom of it. It's got us slightly baffled, but all of a sudden, the gap that did exist has disappeared. So up on race control, the message has come now from race control, I should say, up on timing. The car number 12, Fabian Coulthard, under investigation for the start. So the reason why the rest of the pack were tardy was they were waiting for the light to change. So we'll see whether there's more to this story. 0.3 of a second is the gap. Coulthard over Mostert. 
And Winterbottom and Van Gisberg are in together with Courtney. So they're dumping that fuel that I spoke about in the Hino hub. They're getting the first mandatory fuel dump away. They've got to bring on 120 litres down the inside goes Davis and with his mate Winkup testing the friendship in the dust down there between three and four. And he got a dug, Will Davison. Holdsworth got through at the same time, didn't he? I think Holdsworth grabbed Davison in that move also. So whilst they were bumping each other, Will was able to make a spot. That's a jump there yep. from Courtney. And Van Gisbergen had to wait. So clearly you can determine your own fuel levels in those stops. So it's not necessarily a tardy pit stop. Here it is. Got to see the light. So Fabian's gone way quicker than those around him. OK, Here here's the lights. He's oh, oh, wow. There was a little bubble by Mostert. That's what stopped. That's, uh, oh, that was a strange one. Hard to see. I need toe out on one eye and toe in on the other to see that because I was watching the car and the lights at the same time. In meantime, Mostert is now in. So what happened was Fabian flinched when Chaz did. And in comes Chaz. That leaves Fabian clearly in control at the moment while they think about it in race control. Did he, did he actually go before that right? I'd need to Come see on. it again. Yeah. There's too much going on out there at the moment, though. So we'll get back to that topic. Clear air for Mostert. Yep. Good tyres. Away he goes. That's important. All these people that have bottled up with others, that's going to be hard work for them. So this is Wing Cup. And he's tucked in behind Waters at the moment, who got a little bit of push and shove going up there at turn three. In behind him is Scott Pye at the moment. Holdsworth doing very fast sector splits in the Preston higher entry as well. We're going to get that replay of the start going for you one more time to see if we can focus on it. And I'm going to ignore the yellow car. I reckon Gee. he might be OK. I reckon it might be all right too. It's right on it. Yeah, I reckon yeah. he might be OK. The problem is it's easy for your eye to be tricked by what goes on with Chaz, but I think Fabian's actually got away with it. But anyway, it's in the hands of people who, oh, Rick Kelly, big and contact Caruso. there with Michael Caruso. That will have tweaked the steering in the front right corner of Rick's car. Lowndes has done a 21-2 for the fastest lap of the race. It's cool time. Lowndes down the inside comes Waters being attacked by Wind Cup at the moment with Pi tucked in behind. Jamie gets the run to three. He's got him. He slices down the inside, wind cup, puts the move on, look down the inside also for Pi to go in there together with Tanda. Waters gets swamped. This is what we saw yesterday. So as soon as you get wide, you lose at least one spot. In that particular occasion, two spots as we see Pitha in the pit taking his first stop. So it's pretty willing out there at the moment. Dive now for right down the inside of Waters. Hasn't Waters been smashed up early here? Yeah, he's and battered he, and bruised, isn't he? He's given him a bump, he's given him a hit. And now get ready for this one because Bright did exactly the same. And Waters has lost one, two, and possibly three as Moffat comes up now, moves over. And Todd Kelly and Tim Blanchard are at it on the run to turn 10 as well. So uh, Great Bright start. return <laughs> serve there and gave him a nudge back into turn nine. So the... Oh, he thought he was going to be drilled then. Perkat, lucky not to make contact with the back of Waters. In fact, oh, he is. Wood's been, he's run into the back of Heimgartner. That was a lazy hit, that one. Lowndes is in. Lowndes, Rick Kelly and Cam Waters are all in. So importantly here, Mostert's taken on a bit more fuel and he's in clear air and he's out of the nonsense. So that's, that's right. actually going to work well for them. Keep an eye on him a little bit later. This is a great replay. So we're on board with Winkup. He does the crisscross. So he gets down the inside. He's working on the back of Waters car there for ages. Gets down there. Very nice textbook manoeuvre. In the background. Bang. Pie. He pushes him wide. Straight down the inside goes Tander. So again, two spots. For Waters. David Reynolds has done the fastest lap of the race now. 1 minute 20.5. Fabian Coulthard's the leader. 
He's got a one second margin and I think that he may have survived that fright at the start that where we all held our breath. And Lowndes has now jumped at Mostert. And uh, Lowndes took on 29 litres of fuel and uh, Mostert grabbed a similar sort of number, 28, 29. So they're on a very similar strategy. So that was an important position for Craig Lowndes to get. Bit going on out there at the moment. Here we are with Mark Winterbottom on the run towards turn one. Didn't see who it was that was on the outside of him. Apologies, that's Waters. He's just been absolutely bashed up, hasn't he? PLP for car triple one. That's car one, one, one. PLP exceeding the pit lane speed limit. So, Pitha, you heard in the background there, race director Tim Schenken, what the explanation is for the touring through the lane for what will be uh, Chris Pitha's car. So this is all the stuff that Waters got involved in in the last half a lap or so. There's Bright. It's about to arrive. Bright's about to arrive. Right there. Bang. So then there's a little biff and barge up to turn eight. So Waters, bang, gives Bright one. Pushes him wide. They run out of there. Waters purposely pushes him wide. Now, bang, he gets one. In, in reply, Bright goes by. Well, then he got Todd Kelly goes by. Blanchard goes by. Then he got stomped on by the pack. Here comes Van Gisbergen down the inside. He grabs Courtney, and that's the position done. And uh, no breach of rules for car number 12. Important message from race control. So an ideal start for Coulthard. It was more about the flinch that we saw from Mostert that tricked our eye. So he's in the clear, and he's leading the race at the moment by one second. So Will Davison looks fast. He was very good yesterday. Dave Reynolds has done a really good job in this race. He was actually up to six spot. He's coming into the pits now. With the fastest lap of the race. Exactly, with the fastest lap of the race. Thank you, Neil. So he's also in there on his own at the moment. Well, in the... All clear behind, mate. All clear behind. You're all clear. All clear behind. <laughs> So Will Davison took on a fair bit of fuel as well in his stop, he, just under 40 litres of fuel, so that'll serve him well, depending on where he sits in the air at the moment. But there he is on screen, in fact, so he's got clear air, so that'll actually be quite handy for him. He's got a bit of fuel and he's got a bit of track to play with. But uh, what's interesting looking at the trend of the refuelling so far, Mark, is that no one's taken a lot of it on. So they're relatively short fuel because there's a space issue there as well. And uh, there'll be a significant standstill time for everybody in now in their second stop. It's a pretty good battle with McLaughlin and Caruso, which has gone on from the start. They started alongside each other on the third row. And as you can see there, Caruso putting pressure on McLaughlin. They had that bump on Caruso made contact with his teammate Rick Kelly on the way down to turn one. We saw that just a minute ago. It's very violent. Check his actions, the way he drives the car, how fast his down change and the movement that he makes. His technique is very short and sharp. Just have a listen here. lane as well in the sister car, car number seven. So first car that's been fueled in the queue at the moment, 13th, so halfway through the field, so half have done it and half haven't, is Craig Lowndes. Lowndes over Mostert, so that was an important grab that Lowndes was able to achieve. Lowndes brought on near enough to 30 litres of fuel. And Mostert, who is racing at the moment, pretty much the same. They might be a litre apart. So very, very little there. So they both, let's call it 90 for rounding. They've got, uh, sorry, let's call it 30. So they've got another 90 to go. Not much in these two cars, as you can see from that lap. We're on board for the whole lap with Mark Caruso. And you can just see there, just a little bar tweak just to cope with the balance changes. So what you do with this is that as the car starts to slide around with the rear tire going away a little bit, this is New surface, remember, soft tyres this weekend. And as the rear of the car starts to slide, the two things you can do is bring the front anti-roll bar up to stiffen the front of the car, or you can reduce the roll stiffness and soften to come off on the rear bar. There's two mechanisms there.
the drivers will play with those in concert with the engineer to get the best balance. A little inside front wheel lock there for Slade. Who is second from McLaughlin on screen. Followed then by Caruso, who we rode with in fourth position. Then it's Lee Holdsworth. There he is, a glimpse of him in the background. Followed by Wind Cup. Car triple one, Chris Pippa did that stop uh, drive through penalty and came out between first and second. And so he's been showing, uh, shown blue flags to make space when the leaders come by at the moment. So I wonder whether or not there's any wounds on Rick Kelly's car after that crunch that we saw there before on the run down towards turn one. Here's Will Davison. So as I said before, he's got nice fresh air around him at the moment and he took on a bit more fuel than most of them. So near enough to 40 litres for Will, which hurts his track position at the moment, but he'll, he'll be able to grab a few of those positions back when it sorts itself out further down the road. He's currently sitting in 17th, uh, but in the queue of those that have stopped, he's about 5th or 6th. He's done a good job now. He was very fast, as I said before, in the closing stages of yesterday's race. And he's 10 to 12 litres better, better off than most of those that are in front of him that have, that have stopped at the moment. Remember that bad pit stop, six seconds, extra time to stop put him way back. He should have been right up there. Just, I just want to get a shot of Rick Kelly to see where the steering wheel is off centre. It's not. It's, it's absolutely straight. So that might be a little bit of a reassurance to Nissan fans that Rick Kelly may not have got the steering damage from that contact with Caruso. So that's good news for Rick. It may still have a little vibration or may not be perfect, but it's certainly not off-centre by far. And he's third in the queue of those that have already stopped. And uh, he took on 30 litres of fuel, so he's got 90 to go. Turn five. You see that graphic there? Reynolds, another fastest lap, 20.21. So you made the comment before, he did a 20.59. At that stage, is the fastest lap of the race. And there's that dust that comes up. On the left-hand side of turn eight, we're on board with Chas Mostert chasing down Craig Lowndes. And uh, Holdsworth's come in. So he's pitted now for his first stop. And the top three, Coulthard, Slade and McLaughlin, have all done personal best sectors in the middle of the racetrack. Here's Lee, right-hand side of screen. Get straight care off. Long way to go in this race. 57 laps. Here's the fuel being delivered. The rules require 120 litres in total, but you can't get it done in one hit. Ready to go. Fair bit of fuel. Ran well yesterday. Ended up finishing in 14th position. Got some valuable points out of that. They're never satisfied unless it's first. Stage of the weekend, they had a pretty tough run and were right down the order, so they've been making recovery pace in that car. So, baby Coulthard's got one and a half seconds now over Tim Slade from Scott McLaughlin. Then it's Caruso, then Wincup, then Tander. Then Pye, Bright, Blanchard, Percat, Russell. And the first of those that stopped is in 12th position, and that is Craig Lowndes. And at the moment, Guys who haven't stopped will be doing qualifying laps. They'll be doing the very best laps they can possibly do because they'll be looking to use the end of this tyre set. Just use it up as hard as you can. So they're all doing personal best sectors. In fact, on that lap there before, McLaughlin did his fastest lap. Tanda. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All clear in pit lane. Once the... So Tan has stopped with pretty textbook. There goes Will Davison. So he'll tuck in behind his teammate James Courtney. Davison and Van Gisberg are locked in combat here. They're 15 and 16. Good battle going on. James actually made some ground. Remember Van Gisberg was on for a fourth or fifth spot to start this race. He's on a very, very good lap and went off at the final corner. So he was very unhappy with his ultimate qualifying, which was 12. Now, you're not supposed to end up with that fuel coupled and the car on the deck. That was a bit line ball. Very close. So, uh, 
that's very close to being an infringement there, I'd say, for Team 18. So uh, our cameras picked that up in the lane. Tim Slade's done the fastest sector split in the third sector. Uh, I reckon it was down. It'll depend on the interpretation up and down the lane uh, by the, via the uh, supercar officials. And Slade, he's just done his fastest lap of the race too, Neil. 20.37 on the previous lap. So, as I said, they'll be using every bit of life, every bit of goodness left in these tyres. Wear them out, smash them up as hard as you can because now it'll determine where you position yourself after their stop. So currently, 10 guys haven't made the stop. Coulthard, Slade, McLaughlin, Caruso, Winkup, Pye, Bright, Blanchard, Percat, Russell. Greg Lowndes is the first of the people that have made that first compulsory stop. Boys, I've just been into DJR Team Penske and had a word to Dr. Ryan's story about Fabian Coulthard and what they might do here. They are going lap to lap with car 12, watching his pace relative to those like Lowndes and Molstad who have already been in for service. Now, he's dropped off a little bit in pace terms compared to those guys, so just keep your eye on it. They may bring him in soon. Slade is a little quicker on that last lap and he's closed that margin. You can see there's an interesting arm wrestle here between Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske and Brad Jones Racing. So Tim slowly gnawing away at that margin. His sector splits were great in the last lap. Tim was personal best in sectors one and two and race best in sector three. And uh, a similar strategy game going on here because there's, there's a bit of... Uh, well, commonality is probably the correct terminology here because Phil Keat engineers Fabian Coulthard came out of Brad Jones Racing. So they obviously each know, well, they don't know the specific strategy for each race, but they'll have learned the same sort of tricks over a long period of time. So they're shadowing each other at the moment in this race. Lee Holdsworth had just done the fastest lap of the race at 20.2. Garth Tander has just eclipsed that time to set the fastest lap of the race in car two for Holden Racing Team a 20.16 so he's just done his stop come back out with fresh tires he's using them up and in fact we saw tanda just with his teammate there and they do race well both james courtney and garth tanda tanda made a lot of ground early so this will be interesting to see how far coulthard and slade run now caruso's in that allows McLaughlin and Wind Cup to be third and fourth. So again, it'll be a nice, clear, easy run. Nice stop. Nice and controlled. Good information. Ludo's talking to Craig, meanwhile because they're concentrating hard. They're on a different play at the moment. The battle with Mostert is an intriguing one because he's got a little gap about a second over Mostert. Trading blows in terms of ultimate speed. These guys also trading blows here, Davison and Van Gisbergen. Craig's doing whatever Ludo wants him to do, so he just said thank you very much, and it was a personal best lap for Craig on the last lap. Lowndes did a 1 minute 20.4. So we're also seeing this ongoing trend from yesterday, a very flat and speedy lap speed. People are punching out numbers much deeper into the session, into the race than we might otherwise expect. It's down to 0.7 of a second now between Coulthard and Slade as this raging battle continues between Davison and Van Gisbergen. These guys are 15th and 16th. Win cups in, by the way, out of fourth position. Just heard David Couchy talking to Jamie. Let's listen into this. Leading, don't come in too early, just come in, uh, just under the vortex boom there, mate. The tyres are filled, it's going to be a little while. There's not too much else happening. Nice and square, mate, just give it a bump. Nice one. Yeah, just give it a three, Jerry, please. All the tyres run, mate, waiting on the field. Still another 10 seconds or so, mate, have a breather. Not much going on. Have a look around, boys. Make sure there's nothing hanging off in the grill. Got about five seconds left. Aaron Russell came in as well. Car number 18 is under investigation for that refuel that we looked at a little earlier as well.
as well. So it looks like they put a fair bit of fuel in Jamie's car then. So he came in on lap 16 then, so in round terms it burnt roughly 50 litres of fuel. Probably started with around about 80, so plenty of room in the tank to be able to squeeze down some more and get rid of more of the mandatory requirement. And there's the confirmation on screen as that gap narrows to down now in the order of 0.4 of a second between Coulthard and Slade. So he's on him now, isn't he? He's within striking distance. I walked up there earlier in the day on the exit of turn two to have a look at the curbing. You made the remark to me yesterday that the exit curbing is pretty, pretty nasty, pretty harsh, and it is. It's, a, aggressive, it's it? seriously aggressive. No wonder they try and stay off it either on the ideal race line or some people are now doing the full straddle and getting to the left wheels to the left of it. Guys, just uh, taking a look at the rig there on the car 88. Uh, you can see he was obviously sitting still for a long time. Just over 70 litres going into Jamie Wincup's car. So they are fueled for quite a long period of time. This is shaking up to be a pretty interesting one strategy-wise, isn't it? Yeah, it is. On our numbers, we're seeing 65 litres for Wincup. Caruso now got into the 19s, by the way. So one minute, 19.9 for Michael Caruso. Fastest car on the racetrack. 0.3 of a second is the gap between Coulthard and Slade. You can spot it there on screen. It's tight. These fellas, compared to the first in the queue that's done a stop, which is Lounds, is 35, correction, 38.5 seconds. He's all over him now. This could be on for a positional change. I reckon this is hurting both of them now. Yeah. They, they need to get in. They need to put some fresh tyres on and get organised because this is the opposite of the undercut. The other guys are making huge ground and whilst they're doing late 20s, 20 20.9 20 that lap for Coulthard, you said a second ago, Caruso's at a 19.9. second difference. So Slade last lap was a 20.6. He was about three tenths of a second quicker than Fabian Coulthard. As we take the rear bumper cam shot from Fabian's car, certainly having a much more of an evident struggle at the moment, isn't he? Look how Tim can place his car by comparison. This is turn eight. This bodes well for Tim Slade. It looks like at the end of the run that he's got genuine pace on Fabian. Did a superb job yesterday. Faultless drive from the young 30-year-old from Adelaide. Pit this lap. So let's just see what happens whether Slade chases him in or not. He does. Now the reason he does that is there's a little gain to be made. You can't get pinged with the radar when you're in the second oh, car. Mistake. That was a mistake. Oh, he went he off the road. Coulthard went off the road then as he tried to get to the right. So clear run into the box here, mate. Clear run. There's 12 seconds of fuel here, mate. Now, do they react to each other and keep an eye on the other for fuel load, or do they just play their own game? Okay, also in is McLaughlin. That's important. Just keep an eye on him. Fuel here. A couple of seconds to go. Here's the going to drop space. The lane is clear. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Got him. Bright's the only one out there now that hasn't stopped. Lowndes is into second position, the first of those that have stopped. Somebody's gone by there with a car that sounds ordinary as well. We heard it yesterday too. Oh, problem here for Holdsworth. He stopped on the run down to turn three. People will react to this, to this safety car. Oh, and another car off the road, plus fitness entry. So that's Aaron Russell off the road down there as well. So drama for Lee Holdsworth, drama for Aaron Russell. Expect to see people come in and try and squeeze some fuel in. So what's here happened go. here? Pl uh, Blanchard on the run to one. OK, so they've touched locked horns at turn two. Now, Lowndes is going to come in. And uh, Aaron's gone wide down there at turn 11. Managed to come out the other side, though. Well, fellas, Aaron Russell's got a major problem now. There's something going on. I thought it was actually oil smoke. He's got a, a left front suspension issue by the looks from where I can see at the moment, but there was a lot of smoke coming out of that car. It's a wheel. He's got a puncture. So he's gone off down at 11 because the left front wheel. 
the tyre has gone down and uh, he's lost that one. This is important. Lowndes and Mostert have come in together with Winterbottom and Caruso. They're all jumping in to grab extra fuel at the moment. Still 49 laps remaining. Reacting to the safety car. Rick Kelly stayed out. Tim Slade has stayed out. Fabian Coulthard stayed out. Slade and Coulthard just did their stops. OK, mate, we've got you here. Pretty busy pit lane, as you can see. Is there to into the box for us? That's the way. Betty, we don't need a tear off. Good to go, we just uh... remember they can't get home from here. This is a top up. Traffic in the lane, HRT had had to double stack and uh, critical lap if you remember the Hino hub was lap 30. Well, there's a graunch there. Caruso and Waters. Waters is having to double stack as well. It didn't cost him too much. Oh, that's close to contact between Tanda and Mostert. Garth thought about trying to wriggle around him. Couldn't be done. There goes Van Gisbergen. Rick Kelly's the leader from Slade and Coulthard. So this is a very interesting strategy play whilst we're behind the Lexus safety car because some had just stopped some had just been in the pit here's Mostert just rejoining very close with car 2 Garth Tander in fact Tander moved it just outside the fast lane to just relieve the stress and the pressure there there's the damage to the left hand front that Greg Murphy reported for Aaron Russell Let's go if you're on a Preston Hire racing with the team owner Charlie Schwerkold. It sounds like a gearbox issue for Lee. Yeah, it looks like it. He was going into that corner up there and uh, went downshifted and uh, yeah, nothing left, unfortunately. And uh, we don't know if it's a drive shaft, we don't know what it is. And uh, but yeah, he's got no gears, unfortunately, which is devastating. You are going to have a good day in the sun, Charlie. I know it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Frustrating after qualifying sixth for yesterday's race, and then as I reported earlier, it made it into the uh, uh, what was he, 10th in the race and then qualifying in 14th. Here's the replay of what happened down here at Turn 2 between Aaron and Tim. This will be the reason for the failure that Craig Murphy was talking about and the one that sidelined the Plus Fitness entry. So that's put some damage in the front left corner of that car, potentially damaged suspension and also punctured that tyre. Now Chaz has come back in, Super Chief Auto entry. Wonder why here, what's going on there? Squeeze some more fuel in. Got a clear running round BOC, nice and hard. Belly but a dash of fuel, bro. Fuel to bomber. So they've got uh, on our numbers at the moment, they've taken 76 litres, so they're just getting some more in. Go, 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 clear, go, go, go. We're hearing just strategic. Well, we're hearing reports they maybe didn't get enough on the, on the second stop then. They didn't get enough, apparently. So let's just see what happens here in terms of what that does. That'll smash Chaz track position states because it actually puts him behind James Courtney so on the road at the moment he's actually 24. Rick Kelly leads from Slade, Coulthard, Davison, McLaughlin, Reynolds who's done a good job today, Winkup, Bright, Moffat, Perkat. Again interesting strategy plays. I was uh, just uh, looking on uh, Chase Mostert's uh, rig here, fuel rig, and uh, he's managed to squeeze it all in. So he uh, looks like good to go to the finish. Wow. That is interesting, Greg. Safety car, when you're out of line, get home up from this to slide to 80, We're please. not at uh, the critical lap yet. We, we think the fuel consumption is too high to get home from here, so we're just... We've got calculators bursting here at the moment. There's sparks coming off, Niels. We'll come back to you with that and work that out for you as we continue to be held behind the Lexus safety car. It's the first time that we've seen the Lexus safety car for some time. We went through the whole weekend in Barbagello. It's normally one of the highest rates of safety car usage in Australia and uh, didn't get to do this. This is now the restart as we see the safety car pulling off and Rick Kelly will lead them to the line. Topping it. If there is another safety car, though, topping up can help the cause for Mostert. But on my numbers, he can't get home from there. It's going to be lap. Depends on your fuel burn, obviously, and the safety car interventions. But it's about lap 30, 31. Rick Kelly's the leader from Tim Slade. 
Tim's having a peep up the inside. Coulthard runs with him. How's that for a shot? The speed angle on the run to turn three. Rick slides it off three. Just listen to the roar of these cars through the middle here. They're on the Red River a heap of places. We'll just go quiet for a minute. Just soak this up. Side slide at 10, he makes a move. Forces the issue, he'll be exposed down here at 11 unless he covers, but Tim's covered. And so is Rick. Fabian goes the other side. This is enthralling. Turn 11, line of stern up the inside. Oh yes, done, Will Davison, he's got it done. Nice work, Will. It's not over. They're alongside each other, the two New Zealanders. McLaughlin's around the outside. Oh. Little bump from Dave Reynolds into the back of the Volvo. Big slide from McLaughlin. That was great car control. That was a right-hand rear tyre failure, I think, for Mostert. Rides down the inside of Winkup. Wow, what a restart. It, was, it looked like there was damage on the right rear of his car, didn't it? So they're trying to grab fuel for Mostert, I imagine, but there may be more damage. We'll come back to that one. How was that manoeuvring in that last half a lap? Nice move for Will Davison. Yeah, there is damage there, big damage. So, pop the tyre off. You know this why? Has just murdered him. That's when you get back in the field too far. You spoke about it in the Hino Hub. Track position is king. You go back too far, there's damage also. A lot of damage to the left hand side there for James Courtney. That's probably out of turn two. That's huge. Now, there's a bit more to the story here because they're together. So, Mostert down the inside. Yep, little bump. Oh, and they hit hard. That's heavy contact. That's the damage for both cars. So, sorry, it wasn't turn two. Look at that. And locked wheel. So, it was right rear wheel with left rear wheel on James Courtney's car. And picked it up and threw the super cheap car down. Wrecked the rim and the tyre. So, Slade's got control of this race now, and off he goes. He's got a second margin already over Rick. Once again, Will Davison is racing, and Fabian's tucked in behind him. Will sold him a pass there at turn 12 before and got it done. He did. This is the spot. Rick made his own mistake. That's at turn 10. He ran in this slightly too deep, got wide, couldn't get it back to the apex, and Tim Slade gets through. Now, we said Tim Slade's performance yesterday was faultless. He has now, with that manoeuvre, put himself into a situation where if he can drive the car smoothly, do beautiful clean laps, he can win this race again today. That was gift wrapped. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Turn 10. Yeah. Would you like the lead? So Rick will be frustrated by that. Just outbraked himself down there at Turn 10. So that was the voice of Phil Key. Interesting, he said once they come up to pressure, so they've started those tyres as low as they dare and expecting performance to build. So he's all over the back of Will Davison as now Mark Winterbottom comes in. We're hearing there may be a puncture for Mark Winterbottom. Monitor that for you once again, straddling the kerb and on the run up the hill is Coulthard. It looks like he's got a bit of extra speed now. Strategically, Winterbottom was in reasonable shape with the amount of fuel that he brought on. So if he has got a problem here, this is a crush. No winner drops. No winner drops. Clear. No, no, no. So we may have been dudded there. So up the inside now. Fabian Coulthard puts him in an awkward spot when they get to turn number eight. He drops back in. He can't expose too much of the rear of that Falcon at the moment because David Reynolds will be straight in there. just perfect for Tim Slade. 2.9 seconds the margin now and a personal best for him in the first sector.
could battle this. Oh, he's down there. Great move, Fabian. That was a great move. Get it stopped. Well done. That was very aggressive. Reynolds up the inside of Davis and Dunn. David Reynolds is in this, in the Penride entry. He's grabbed Will Davison. And Fabian was lucky to get away with that. He skated through the corner and slithered out the other side, but it slowed them up so much, David was able to get some benefit. McLaughlin is next in the queue behind Davison. Then it's Bright. My arm's in the pit. With Waters. <laughs> I don't know where to look. <laughs> Dave Reynolds, what a great pass that was. Very impromptu. Those spontaneous passes are great. Let's listen to this, Lowndes. A little bit of traffic in the lane. Good to go, good to go. We are. So this battle rages still with Davison. McLaughlin, little rub, little rub on the way in. Dave Reynolds has done a great job. His best position so far this year was race three. Oh, and off. Contact with Winterbottom. Contact. Lowndes off the road. This is a game changer for Craig Lowndes. He loses another spot there. Now, Winterbottom on my numbers also is fueled to the end. So they got the benefit of some additional efficiency from the safety car. And if their fuel burn was a bit better than we were predicting, it shifts forward that critical lap slightly. But that's a big moment between Winterbottom and Lowndes. There's stuff going on everywhere at the moment. Here we are with Kelly. Tucked in behind him is Coulthard, then Reynolds, then Davison. And look at this angry pack involving McLaughlin, Bright and Winkup. I was really impressed with that Fabian Coulthard pass. It was an aggressive dive. And we're looking at it now from Dave Reynolds. So have a look in front. This is the dive. Bang, down there, gets it done. Have a look at the slide. Right out sideways, done. And then Dave, bang, pounces. Alongside, make a little bit of contact, uses all the curb, and got a really nice pass. And now this is the big moment. Bang, wheel to wheel, and lounge off the road with Winterbottom. It's clean though, here it is from on board. You'll see a better view of this, there was space. So he's up past the B pillar. There's a bit of a rub right at the critical moment, but I think he'll get away with that one all OK. I do too. And now Lowndes is fueled to the finish as well. So this is getting really interesting, isn't it? Look at Ludo. He knows that that really hurt. That was a pivotal time for these guys. Remember the master stroke for Ludo and Lowndes at Barbagallo Raceway in Perth when they made an extra stop, come through the field, past everybody. This time, though, contact with Winterbottom. Van Gisberg is in. Coulthard down the inside, he skates it on the rear brake, and he's done it. Don't take too much, just come under the boom. Beautiful and nudge. It's not going to be that long here, mate. Just stay close and close. Very good pace. Very, very good pace from Fabian. So, Coulthard's got that done. That was a nice move. There was not another Skerrick left under brakes, was there? That was maxed out. So he's clear now, but he's six seconds behind Tim Slade. And it was the other way around. Slade had better pace when Coulthard in the previous segment of the race, at the end of the race, for the first segment, Slade was the man that had great tyre life. So let's see if there was a little tweak for Fabian, maybe even a little driving style tweak. This is an impressive run again by Tim Slade. But on correction, remember, he's only taken 47 litres, let's round it and call it 50. So he's got a lot of fuel to bring on in a subsequent stop. So there's still a whole lot more to play out in this story. It's still just inside 40 laps remaining. A lot of racing to come this afternoon. But the order at the moment is Slade, Coulthard, and then Rick Kelly. Look at Bright sweating all over the back, the Volvo.
Uh, this has been a popular spot for people having trouble today as well. So Garth Tand has tossed it off the road down there on the way in. There's been a bit of pressure down there. The track's obviously pretty grubby in that location, but there's valuable seconds lost as well. Bright's been very good today. He's made real ground. The car looks a lot better. Maybe a little more like his teammate in terms of Slade's performance. Just Slade, Coulthard, Kelly, Reynolds, Davison, McLaughlin, Bright, Winkup, Moffat, Percat. That's your top ten. There's some out of sync because Winterbottom, Blounds, Van Gisbergen, they've made extra stops. So has Cam Waters. A lot of damage to the side of James Courtney's HRT car. Huge contact with that bump at turn 10 with Mostert. Much more than a bump. They ended up catching wheels together. Left the car in the air. A lot of damage to the left-hand side of James Courtney's HRT 22. Adrian Burgess said we could have a word with him, but he said no way. He put the net up, Scapey. That's how angry he is about this. The door skin on the left rear uh, door is completely gone. The crew are still working. They had to stop a moment ago for Tanda, and now they've come back to work on 22 again. Yeah, there's going to be a bit of emotion off the back of this race through a variety of camps, Greg. Lots of people out there have been involved in some pretty aggressive running. It's got a very different feel to it to yesterday's race. We've typically seen some pretty wild Saturday 120k races, but it's the opposite today. Down the inside, Van Gisbergen on Lowndes. No space here. A little crisscross. Almost some contact there with Lowndes to the back of Van Gisbergen. I'm just going to report that it's actually Lowndes' car that's got that off the off sound. We'll see if we can pick it up. Sound great, doesn't well, it? Well, there's one of them in the field going by. We saw Perkett have trouble earlier in the weekend with a misfire. But the word is that it could be Lowndes. Wind comes back in with Moffat and Caruso, by the way. Dave Reynolds got real pace here, Neil. He's made a lot of ground on Rick Kelly. Genuine speed. A genuine speed for Jason Bryan. If he can get by McLaughlin, the car looks very good as we're looking at Wind Cup now. there for Bright. Tried to get by McLaughlin. He's gyrated doing so. He was getting frustrated. You can see he was getting frustrated trying to get by. And as I said, just before that incident, he had really good car pace. Scott was holding him up, but you've got to make these clean. So here he is. He's fired down the inside. He just gets in on the curb and just turns itself around. Luckily, didn't make contact and then straight into first gear, spins it around. In fact, he'll be in a bit of trouble for that because it looked like for Todd Kelly that he had to take evasive action. So this is on board now with Scott. There's Bright over the curb. He rotates. Now, he's lit it up, turned it around, but have a look at the other cars. They've actually got to go off the road to avoid him. Now, Dave Reynolds, who I was just complimenting for his speed. Todd Kelly in. There's 35 laps to go. We're going to drop you into the middle of a whole bunch of stuff, but there's not much we can do about it. So, the battle rages here with Pai and Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen showing good pace now. Made real progress. Slept away a little bit. I think it is Lowndes' car. When we just got that wall shot there, I reckon it is Lowndes' car on seven cylinders. Sounds like a massive Ferguson. Just listen for this. It's 
hard in that zone there because you don't use a lot of throttle. It's going so slow at 65 or 70 k. Yeah, Scabby, you're right there. They've uh, broken a header, I think, on the car Triple H. Just talking to Andrew Simpson there, who's confirmed confirmed that one. It's running on eight cylinders, but uh, she does sound like a little bit of a trucker at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Yeah, it can't be doing that lap speed on seven, but it certainly sounds shocking, doesn't it, every when it comes past. But I, I wasn't sure that it was him to begin with. So Mark Winterbottom, let's just focus on him for one moment here. He's done three stops. The numbers that I'm looking at at the moment, he's in the box seat, but he is in an arm wrestle with Tim Slade. Tim Slade's the leader of the race. He's done one stop. And when Tim Slade stops for his second stop later on, he's going to have to bring on a lot of fuel. He only got on board just under 50 litres for his first stop. Timmy, let's uh, get an update. There is a lot going on out there at the moment. Strategically, it's a pretty exciting sort of race. Uh, Frosty doing a great job at the moment doing what you're doing. And you know, Jason Graves putting down uh, some interesting things as far as strategy. He's got all the fuel and he's good to go to the finish. Yeah, no, he's good to go to the finish. I think we're probably racing McLaughlin somewhere around there at the moment, we think, based on uh, how much fuel people have got to put in. So. Yeah, I think Slady and Coulthard are one two at the moment. It's a shame for Chaz. Obviously, the, the boys next door sort of pulled the, the trigger on that one, brought him in. Looked like he was going to have to do a bit of fuel saving, but then obviously that incident uh, has sort of seemed to ruin his day a little bit. Yeah, no, he was good to go to the end, but obviously, yeah, you get a puncher and game over. But anyway, he was trying hard and uh, unfortunately didn't pay off. But look, who knows? Still a long way to go, so we'll wait and see. OK, thanks, bud. Cheers. So Rick Kelly in. This is crucial time for everyone concerned because it's about track position where does it put him out let me just correct myself on the fuel that uh, Slade needs to scope it's going to be about 12 seconds of fuel just to clarify that there's been so much going on out there with pit stops and people reacting to safety cars we're in catch-up mode just trying to work through the strategy play here at the moment but it's distilling to a nice battle between winter bottom who's done three stops so far. Slade, who's done a single stop, who leads the race. The margin between them at the moment is 50-odd seconds. Slade's got to get in, as Will Davison's doing at the moment, process his stop, and bring on stationary time fuel of around about 12 seconds. Hope that clarifies it. So Will showed really okay, good pace. We've got you here. Straight into the box for us, please. Put the board in the middle of the car. Board in the middle of the car. We're doing fuel and four tyres. Fuel and four tyres. Steady into the box. Steady into the box. That's the way. Nice work. Clear pit lane. Clear pit lane. Guys, do you need a tear off? Clear pit lane. Yes, do a tear off. Clear pit lane still. Long stop here. We dropped him, mate. We dropped him. Waiting on fuel. Courtney goes by. Almost 24 seconds there for Will Davison. And he showed real speed early in the race and struggled in that last phase. We saw Van Gisbergen monstering Will. Now he emerges back out just in front of Rick Kelly. There's Reynolds down the inside of Tander on the subject of Van Gisbergen. He's stalled in the stop as well. Car number 97. Tander's going to make an argument out of this into turn five. 8.8 seconds is the margin. Slade over Coulthard. Slade's racing. Winner bottom at the moment. 50 odd seconds behind him. Still a massive 32 laps remaining in this race this afternoon. We're on lap number 36. It's going to be a busy afternoon. Dave Reynolds, as he made that move there with Tander. We're on board now with Wink Cup. Dave Reynolds has just done the fastest lap of the race with a 119.85. Not quite as fast as yesterday. New lap record set by Fabian Coulthard yesterday with a 19.70. So one and a half tenths of a second adrift at the speed we saw yesterday as Wink Cup attacks the back of the HRT. Commodore and gets it done down the inside of turn 12. Nice manoeuvre. Now they start to load up on Tanda. That's Dale Wood in behind. This is the move with... Oh, a little bump there with Dave Reynolds. Garth won't be too happy with that. I think he returned surf. So have a look at this on the exit right now. That little oversteer moment is a little bump from car two.
which he was well within his rights to do that based on the race craft between those two parties. Reynolds has been the fastest driver in sector one this afternoon. Heingarten the fastest in sector two and Wing Cup the fastest in sector three. Cromwell just in watching the scrum in action at Brad Jones Racing. Julian Stannard, Andrew Edwards, Brad Jones, Chris Clark, team boss as well. And they've been crunching the numbers. They're saying roughly three or so laps before they bring Slade in. But it will depend on what happens on track at the moment. Yeah, and Brad sent me a text before asking who had actually been fueled to the finish. So they're <laughs> factoring a bit of our strategy in here as well. <laughs> good Thanks, luck. Rusty. Yeah, good luck. We're spinning on the spot, keeping up with this one at the moment. But Slade's got a margin of nine seconds over Coulthard. Frosty's in seventh. Three stops to his name. Fueled to the finish. Correct. Oh, oh, big mistake there. And running wide for Heimgartner, which creates a little moment for Slade. They're the things you've got to negotiate. On correction. The corrected gap between Winterbottom and Slade is showing on the computer as being very, very narrow. That's the reason why the boys down at Brad Jones Racing are biting their nails. No, not long now, the next car coming to you is a lap down as well. This is a great story for these guys and for this young man, particularly based on what happened yesterday. There's his engineer. That must be contagious, the Brad Jones rattle. Whenever he's agitated, Brad's knee or nervous, bounces up and down. Julian's caught it. Might be viral at BJR. Well, Julian didn't need, just because we're up in Ned Kelly country, to look like Ned for the weekend. He looks <laughs> like a little replica, doesn't he? So here we are back on board here with Tim Slade. There's Julian. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty healthy beard he's got They're going. Working numbers hard there at the moment, and that's James Courtney just sidestepping because he's well out of this race. He's 11 laps down. Slade, who drove very well yesterday, become the 73rd winner in the history of the Australian Touring Car Championship, V8 Supercar and Supercar competition. So, a very important moment in his career, local team, Brad Jones Racing, and a great battle continues from first to second. Fabian Coulthard, it's been going from the start. Fabian got away beautifully. Controversial jump was adjudicated to be okay and as we go on board with Dave Reynolds he continues to make ground he's got real pace at the moment he's in behind Michael Caruso no? yeah he is man I'm in with uh, Barry Ryan team principal here at Erebus too just watching David Reynolds mate so uh, been finding some real pace in that car over the last day or so you guys been, I know how hard you've been working to try and find it and Dave's finally looks like he's got some good confidence there going yeah you know what it's like you drove it in the co-driver session so we've worked really hard we're testing every session we go out and we just started to get a car that Dave's actually driven for the same time, like session to session instead of a different car every time. So he made a bit of a mistake in qualifying today, which is probably his first mistake compared to the team. But you know, it's going really strong now. So yeah, how are you looking to the finish of the race? Yeah, we're right for fuel, and Dave's driving the wheels off it. That's all you can do. That's it. And it's good to see. It. It's encouraging when you start to get a bit of a feel for pace in the car, and he's tucked in behind. Michael Caruso at the moment. So just further clarifying what the distilled position of this race looks like at the moment. You've got a 9.9 second margin slayed over Coulthard. And Tim has clearly got pace over Fabian at the moment. The real race that's going on here is that Mark Winterbottom is seventh from Cam Waters eighth and then Shane Van Gisbergen. They are very close and it's going to be line ball whenever Brad Jones Racing and Freightliner react and bring in Slade, get the fuel on and get him done we're watching Reynolds as to how that all pans out so there's theory we project forward on this but we don't know the reality of whether or not they cleanly get into the lane whether they execute the stop correctly and I believe that Waters is not far yeah Waters is actually in this game so I wasn't 100% sure whether or not he was but he is so Winterbottom Waters Van Gisberg and keep an eye on them and he's sliding around a bit at the moment he's got big pressure on him from Shane Van Gisbergen. And Shane lost a little bit of time in the pit lane when he stalled it. And with Lowndes, remember, will have power compromised by that broken header on that car. So there's a bit of damage also to the rear of the Waters car. Remember all the push and shove at the very beginning of the race. It may not have affected the geometry, but it may well be affecting a little bit of the aero behaviour at the back of the car. A bit of a curve usage there, Cam Waters. Shane's definitely got pace on 
Cam at the moment, trying to find the right spot. And the crisscross here is the spot. So come off turn two on a narrow line. Right there. So this is a nice pressure battle. And having Shane Van Gisbergen behind you in one of those moods would be stressful. Here we are. The race leader's in. Now we reckon that there's 52 seconds involved. Mind just keep your foot on the brake during the stop. We should be here for about uh, 20 seconds. And 52 in total. Chris Clark, car controller. Bobby. And we'll be watching for Winterbottom Waters and Van Gisbergen in that order. Here's Frosty exiting nine. We reckon he's got about a second, a second and a half cushion, maybe. They're watching fuel delivery on the rig for car 14. Frosty's on the run to 11. They're immediately opposite with the bottle of car to where this car's sitting at the moment. Then he has to dawdle out at 40 k's, and when you're in the car, it's a month of Sundays. Here comes Frosty. He'll have margin, Tim Slade. Question is just exactly how much. So he's got out with a nice cushion. This is a, this is a great number for Tim to work with from here, this sort of cushion. And then just behind Frosty, you've got Waters and Van Gisbergen. Here they are. That's the story. That's the story. And this is now a battle to the end. Just over 25 laps remaining. Cam Mark Winterbottom, last year's champion. Brown. This is this. Well, I thought Aaron Russell was going to do it again. I thought Perth, be, they had the drama at Perth with Aaron Russell and Mark Winterbottom. I thought there was going to be contact there on the way into turn seven. But Aaron moved it over nicely. Mark was able to get by without too much delay. And this is the battle. So just check this gap. The slave has 2.6 seconds over Mark Winterbottom. So Coulthard's got eight and a half seconds over Scott McLaughlin. Remember, Coulthard, McLaughlin, Percat, Bright, Blanchard, they've only stopped twice. Tim Slade's now done his second and his final stop in the race. The real focus at the moment is the margin between Slade and Winterbottom, but there's a big argument going for the minor placing at the moment. Tim Slade may well pull a double winner act out of his Woodstock Winton Super Sprint weekend, which would be a fantastic outcome for him. Yeah, as we look on at uh, Scott Pike on the right story, we're going to grab a bit of an update. This has been an incredible strategic race that is still yet to probably play out completely, but uh, your guys in pretty good condition. I mean, uh, Pye, Scotty's doing a great job. Fabian's still to stop. Where do you think Fabs might pop out? Well, I think we're only a couple of laps away from stopping, but I think Fabian's going to come out around his teammate Scotty there, so uh, we'll see what happens. it will be in good shape, though, with some good tyres on there. Yeah, fresher tyres. Hopefully we can uh, we can be on the attack for the last few laps of the race and see how we go. He looks like he has been having a little bit more of a struggle, though. Scott's pace a little bit better than Fabian's. He's been uh, seeming to use the tyres up a bit more. Or... Yeah, he hasn't had a good, as good a run on this set as what he had on a set before, so hopefully with a, with a fresh set of boots he'll, he'll do all right. OK, thanks, Mike. Thank you, Chief. And the reason that happens is only half a pound or a pound of tyre pressure can make an enormous difference. And so when drivers often talk about variance from set to set, usually the culprit is tyre pressure. Is bright into his final stop. That leaves Coulthard, McLaughlin, Percat, Blanchard still to do their second stop. That's eight seconds. Now, Van Gisbergen snuck on by here, and I think there was a moment, there was a moment for Cam Waters up here at turn seven. So that was again a gift wrap position for Shane Van Gisbergen. We're on board now with Shane, check this. So just too wide, catches the sawtooth curb with the left hand rear right out sideways. Actually a good save by Cam Waters. Now this is on board with Lowndes, and this is Dave Reynolds who continues to fire forward, and he's gone off there. Yeah. I reckon. 10 times through the course of the weekend. He's had a shocker at turn 11, hasn't he, all, all weekend. He's talked a lot about rear stability in the car as now Coulthard comes in for his final stop with an 8.8 .8 second lead. Should drop in about 6th or 7th or thereabouts. He's going to be battling with Craig Lowndes. He's not going to be on the podium. A 
Okay, my tires are done. We've got about 12 seconds here to go, mate. Okay, mate, just got a car coming up on your outside here at the moment. Okay, we're clear of them, just waiting on fuel here, mate. Three or four seconds. Go, mate, go, go, go. Slide, so that's your gap. So that's the leader. There's Winterbottom in second. It's going to be about Lowndes or thereabouts. That's Craig exiting turn 12 now. There's Van Gisbergen. And there goes Cam Waters. And there's his teammate. So Ryan Story was on it. He knew that they were going to come out very close. Scott Pye might get a run here. Fabian's got to try to hold him off because he's got fresh tyres. And in behind is Dave Reynolds, who has done a tremendous job today. Erebus is the only team, how's this for a stat, the only team this year to not be on the podium. Oh, and a reverse park for Mostert. Man, he had trouble here on Sunday last year. What a shame for the pole sitter. What a tough afternoon it's been for him. That was a turn two. Awkward place to have a moment. Cars all approaching there. Very high speed. So McLaughlin's the leader of the race from Nick Perkat, and then it's Tim Slade, who's got control of this one at the moment by a handsome margin of about 4.7 seconds. So there's more to this story. So it's contact between turns one and two, Bright and Mostert, whose difficult day gets worse. Always hard with that rejoin there, down into turn one. Frustration for Mostert is these yeah. great qualifyings without the conversions. Happened in Perth, it's now happened here. And, and that'll be hard for that group. I'll have to go through that in the debrief and understand why, what's causing that, how to manage it. Well, he, they put him back too far early, didn't they? So when they made that second stop, he went to the back of the queue. So he got caught with Courtney as a consequence of track position. So when you're at the pointy end, you have less risk. And this was a good move there from Fabian down the inside of Cam Waters. That's actually for position six. But remember, two haven't stopped. McLaughlin and Perkat yet to make their final stops. With some benefit from the fresh tyre. So we've been talking about their flat lap speed performance, but a new tyre or a fresh tyre is still going to give you an edge as McLaughlin peels in now from lead of the car race car number 33 had a 2.8 second lead from nick Perkat. they're running nick long nick's actually followed him now so that leaves slade, slade i beg your pardon clearly in the lead Just now wheels are done just waiting on fuel there's one car behind you in pit lane that's all Five seconds, get ready, get ready. Just cut clear. Go, go, go. Good job. Very good stops today. Meantime, Slade's actually opening the gap to Mark Winterbottom at the moment. It's out to five seconds now. It's about 4.5, 4.6, so he's actually snuck half a second into the game. So it's sorting itself out now with 22 laps remaining. Slade over Winterbottom and then Van Gisbergen, followed by Coulthard, Waters, Pye, Reynolds, Lowndes, Wincup, Caruso. That's your 10. On screen and 11th at the moment is Scott Jordan from Garth Tander. There they are. And right behind Garth is Todd Kelly, old combatants. Followed then by Dale Wood, Nick Perkat, James Moffat, Will Davison, Rick Kelly, Jason Bright, Chris Pitter. That's the 20. Five seconds is the gap. We'll monitor that for you. And then it's a bit tighter between third and fourth at the moment. So Watch Coulthard because he's only 1.8 seconds behind Van Gisbergen with a fresh tyre. Now, even though there's not a big difference between the tyres, I wouldn't mind a fresh set of tyres and a 1.8 second gap. I'd, you'd hook into that for a main course. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. We'll, uh, he'll have car pace at the moment. It's a pretty wild battle here with Moffat, Perkat, Davison, Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly having a little rub there. With Will Davison on the way out and down the inside a move Percat into the side of Moffat. Moffat won't give that away very easily because he's on the inside for the next corner. Moffat then outbreaks Percat. Percat will be looking to do the crisscross, but someone will fill the gap. That person was Will Davison, and that was a lot of contact. In fact, they hit very hard. See that witness mark, tyre mark on the left hand front of Will Davison's car on board now with Fabian and just up in front is Van Giersbergen. 
and this gap is diminishing pretty quickly. It uh, was 1.6 when I first started looking at it. It's now 1.1 seconds. So the fresh tyre that Dr Ryan Storey mentioned before is going to give them a benefit. We've downplayed the notion of undercutting. It's not really an undercut as such, but it's the same kind of effect that the fresher tyre gives you something. And so now he's absolutely able to throw a punch. Shane's not going to have much in the way of a response here. And I don't think his car's totally to his satisfaction either at the moment. So remember, this is for the podium. Keep an eye on them down at turn 11 because that's an ordinary exit here. But uh, he's going to have to go the long way, Fabian Coulthard. She made it easy for him. So uh, Shane's going to be happy to get points today rather than go to a fight to the death and end up off the road. So uh, he struggled through turn 10, Shane Van Gisbergen. So that's a podium now for this group. Shane Cleverly, that was very experienced racing from the young Kiwi. Just come out of the throttle, let Coulthard by. He knew that Fabian had far greater car speed. He knew that if he lobbed at turn 11 alongside him, that potentially he'd go off the road, there would be contact. So to minimise his loss, he just came out of the throttle and that was a very experienced, very mature action. Now, it's not impossible, depending on the trend of the tyres here, that Coulthard could get to Winterbottom. He's 3.8 seconds behind Frosty at the moment. And there's about half a second difference in their current lap speed. 20 laps remaining, big chance of victory, but there'll be some tapering in that lap speed as well that we'll monitor. But just reiterating, it's 3.76 seconds exactly at the moment between Coulthard and Winterbottom, and that's second and third. What's enticing is a safety car. The safety car lobbed at the moment. Fabian is in the box seat based on that speed that he's currently showing. So Fabian did his fastest lap. Lap and a half ago, that was 20.09. We'll just monitor these times for you. So Slade with a 20.87. Winterbottom's about to come over the strike, and he does a 20.95. Fabian Coulthard now at 20.41. So effectively half a second faster. As you said a second ago, that's that's real car pace at this stage of the race. Yeah, so I've underestimated that pace. Earlier I said I don't reckon Fabian's going to be a threat to the podium, but he is obviously on it at the moment and he could actually grab another spot based on the current numbers just uh, grab mark dutton who's uh you feeling any better mate you don't look too bad <laughs> too better mate a bit better hey uh tricky old weekend it's just been incredibly strategically very very tough Giz then just uh, sort of made it pretty easy for fabs he's obviously a bit concerned about his tires being that he's been out there a bit longer yeah exactly 20 to go no point uh just burning his tires up trying to defend someone on much fresher tires with a good car and uh, and then letting the other cars come back Obviously, Grant's done excellent strategy and Gizzy excellent lap times to get us from a poor qualifying position. Yeah, and he had a bit of a problem there in that first pit stop too. I think he got onto the anti stall uh, trying to get out of the pit lane. Yeah, exactly. So lost a little bit of time there. Safety car helped us out a fair bit with 97. Unfortunately, the safety car then hurt us with 88. So um, two better cars than yesterday, so pretty happy with that. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Brad Jones is never one to uh, to count his chickens, but you've, you've patted Andrew Edwards and, and Julian Stannard and the boys on the back after that stop. You feel like it was perfectly timed for Tim. Well, I just felt felt that you know we were racing Frosty, much easier to pass him on the when there's clear air and in the pits, and it is out on the track. And so you know we got out. It was going to be tight, but we got out in front, and I was pretty pretty pumped about the moment. So still got a long way to go. Got 19 laps to go. So. Um, we got good tyres. I think even if there's a safety car, we're in pretty good shape. So just got to get to the end. But you know, got total confidence in Timmy. He did a fantastic job yesterday, and wouldn't it be great if he could win too? Sure would be. 24 hours on him, and he was quiet on the radio yesterday during that race. What's he been like today? And is he just sort of getting on with the job? Yeah, no, he's really quiet on the radio. So we've just, you know, we're just filling him full of the information we think he needs. So we let him know that everyone stops. You know, what his tyre life is like compared to the people around him. And, so really, he'll just be doing line and length, hopefully, and not make a mistake. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens at the end. Nice to see a little smile. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> see a little bit of confidence there for Bradley. So uh, started on the second row of the grid position for Tim Slade. Strategy worked beautifully. They're good at that game down there, typically. 5.2 seconds is the gap. Slade over Winterbottom. And uh, there's the provisional championship points at this point in time. So Winterbottom with a 27-point margin if things stay as they are. Look how tight it is, though. Van Gisbergen 
and that interesting interview with Mark Dutton before, who's got a bit of a cold this weekend. And the observation is correct, you know, having qualified down in 12th strategy-wise from Grant McPherson, nice job to get him up near the sharper end, but just hasn't got the firepower at the moment. So he's drifting from Coulthard. And it could be an interesting battle between Shane and Cam Waters before the end of this one. But that gap between Winterbottom and Coulthard continues to narrow at the moment. It's down to 2.3 seconds. You can see on the bottom of your screen the kind of gains that's been made by Fabian Coulthard. And it was an intriguing interview also there with Brad Jones because Brad doesn't want to be too confident at this stage. His brother Kim was alongside. They're a family team. They're based about an hour north of where we're racing today. And I've said earlier, if they win two days in a row in the DJR Team Penske pit area there with Dr. Ryan Story, and if they win today after winning yesterday, it'll be a public holiday in Aubrey tomorrow. Massive news for a local team. Beautiful part of Victoria here. And what a drive yesterday. And at the moment, 5.676 seconds separates winner bottom and then another seven seconds. So he's holding that margin flat at the moment. Tim Slade over Mark Winterbottom. He's got it static. It's 1.8 seconds uh, between Winterbottom and Fabian Coulthard. Last podium for Coulthard was at Phillip Island. He was third down there. It's a difficult weekend for them in Western Australia. Kelly's got his hands full at the moment. He's 16th. So tucked in behind him here, you've got James Moffat, Jason Bright. Here we go down the inside, car number 33 here is Scott McLaughlin having a crack at Michael Caruso. These fellas are battling for 10th and 11th at the moment. And that's a bit of an angry pack as well. Tand is in there followed by Todd Kelly. A bit of body language. The cars can't use too much curb there. A little look. Michael just missed the apex of turn seven. Real spin for everybody out of seven. Where the dirt comes on the road at eight. Quite a lot of it again today as well. Slow it right down. Slowest corner on the track. Modulate the throttle. Modulate the wheel spin. Up to this tricky left hander. Always locks the rear brake here. The brake cycling. It's not a heavy place in terms of brake wear or temperature here. But it is a weird cycling of the front and rear temperatures. It tends to lock the rears at that one. It also locks the rears down here at turn 11. Little wavy bumps on the approach. New patches of seal, and you can just see it there over the top of this new surface. And this battle with Reynolds and Lounge continues. In fact, Lounge has done a good job with that broken header or exhaust pipe on his Vortex Commodore. Won't be at full power, but it's right in behind. Reynolds has done a good job there. They're battling for seventh and eighth. On board now with Craig. Oh, he's off the road. I just gave him a wrap. And, and the reason why was James Court. He was trying to stay out of the way because he's 11 or 13 laps or something behind. But uh, would have forced Craig high up on the dirty line, I imagine. So he's off the road. The other risk when you've got those header dramas going on is depending on where and how it's broken. Uh, there can also sometimes be some burning effects. Damaging wiring and other things. It sounds shocking in the background. So here's why. Yeah, so he's higher on the turning point than he'd like to be. Don't need to be terribly wide through turn five late in the day when there's a lot of rubber and rubbish on the edge of the road. And off goes Craig. So he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. So he doesn't commit going in there. He can't drive as slowly as James was touring in there. But rounding him up on the outside was costly. Yeah, it was, and it's, it's an interesting corner. It's the fastest corner on the track, but it's got two apexes, so it's got an entry apex, clipping point, inside clipping point, and an exit clipping point. And where Craig had to drive was effectively a car width wider than the first clipping point, which put him out in the dirt, and out in the marbles, right there, right at that spot. And he was escorted wide, slid the car off, and that really hurt in the battle to get by Dave Reynolds, who, as I said, is in seventh position currently. So Slade, Winterbottom, Coulthard. The gap back to 0.4 of a second now. Fabian, great job. You can see the margins here in the respective teams watching 
the action, but interestingly, the margin of the lead now is beginning to expand, which typically also happens when these little stashes begin. So Coulthard's big chance, as we mentioned a little while ago, to actually go one slot better here on these numbers, although just in the last couple of laps, that advantage that he was enjoying with the fresh tyres has begun to diminish somewhat. But you'll be able to see and sense the extra break and mid-corner performance in car number 12. Let's stay here, have a look at this one. Battle for second position. driving by both guys actually at the moment. Every apex there for Mark Winterbottom driving it very straight on the exits. No sliding at all. Interestingly through the very slow second gear corners back there at seven, eight, nine. Frosty's car had a bit better mid-corner speed. They've been stronger down here at 11 and 12. Not much in it. So this one actually is going to be an interesting one because there's no way that he's going to get a written invitation. A year on board, folks, for that lap. That was a 21.07 for Winterbottom versus a 21.06 for Coulthard. So you saw the gap visibly on board with Fabian, and the stopwatch doesn't lie. In the meantime, the margin's out to seven seconds now. Slade over Winterbottom, so he had Tim Slade the best part of three or four tenths over these fellas. Slade looks like... He's driving the car very similar to yesterday, Neil. 6.6 second lead, very straight, beautiful, smooth technique. Local team, they test here, they were fast in February at the initial test for Slade. Remember, he replaced Fabian Coulthard for his team. How strong Frosty was again through seven, eight, and nine. So, split the two halves here for these fellas. So, Melbourne into the circuit, we'll call it. Uh, <laughs> Then Frosty looks pretty sharp. The Sydney end of the circuit, uh, sorry, the other way around, the Sydney end of the circuit is playing in the other direction. So that makes for an interesting head scratch there because where do you try and pull the move? So Fabian's got some strengths in a couple of places. Clearly that's through 10, 11, 12, and he's not bad through 1, 2, 3. Frosty's able to cover him up at the other end of the circuit. Great nail biter. Still 11 laps remaining here. There's our leader at the moment, 6.1 seconds. He lost a bit of time that lap. In fact, that lap, Winterbottom, that's the fastest lap of the race for him, 20.54. So that's a really resurgent lap from Mark Winterbottom. I wonder if he had a little tweak inside the cockpit or just decided to take a bit more energy out of the tyre. This is the zone that Neil was saying before that Frosty's got a little gap. And you can see there, he runs it narrow on the exit pulls away. I saw before Fabian runs it in very quickly in a long arcing loop into the right-hander at turn seven. Okay, mate, so just slow it on the entry and let the car do the work on the exit. Slow it on the entry and let the car do the work on the exit. Bill Keach observing what we're just talking about. Okay, bias 11, please. Break bias 11, please. Yeah, so Phil's seeing the data and the pictures, but it's interesting how hard he ran it in there on the front left tyre into turn seven. And then that was making a big long arc where it delayed him getting on the throttle coming out of seven. And uh, so Phil's suggesting an anti-roll bar change. That's the tweak that I was talking about. I'm just trying to give him a bit of counselling. As I mentioned before, they've got an unusual sort of odd couple relationship, those two. Well, it's a bit of driver coaching. Phil can see the balance numbers, and he can also see the pictures we were talking about was this intriguing gap of the strengths of his car versus Fabian Coulthard. Very interesting battle at the moment, Rusty. 
just want to clarify Nick Perkat's situation. He's back in the LD Motorsport garage. Barry Hay and the team tell me it's a bent toe link in the rear, and they believe it's in the contact with Dale Wood. Thanks, Greg. So we're on board again now with Fabian Coulthard. Up in behind Mark Winterbottom, and this is a little zone that Frost has got a little, little margin on, a little gap. Missed the apex there. That's the first time I've seen him miss the apex. 24 lap difference in the age of tyres here. But this further underscores what we've talked about a lot during the week, that you're not seeing, after they both settle, there's not a huge disparity. Normally, with that kind of difference between the tyre set, if you had a set of tyres 24 laps younger than the other guy, just absolutely eating him alive. This is the final corner. The sun's starting to become a little bit problematic in the rundown to one here. What's always hard when the sun's like this is finding the braking marker you can see that all glistens in the braking zone. Then the next thing that's hard is seeing where the edge of the road is right now. It's hard to pick up the edge of the road because the sun is directly in your eyes as you come out of turn two. And that exit is really important. It's very, very fast. As you come out of turn two, the cars are doing 130 kilometers an hour, running up over the hill to almost 190 K in that zone. Very accurate driving by both these guys. And as you can see, as the race has worn on, there's an absolute racing line right there. If you get wide and you make that dust or debris or marble area on the outside, you'll run off the road. And that's why we've seen today, anyone that was out of sync, who was pushed wide for some reason, they don't just lose one spot, they lose three or four if there's a, a gaggle of cars. So Winterbottom continues to lead. Fabian Coulthard on much fresher tyres. Tim Slade, meanwhile, still leads by six seconds over Frosty. He got it out to nearly seven, and it's just softened again in the recent past, but it's hovering in the low sixes all the time, so he's found his rhythm once more. Sometimes there can be a bit of traffic involved in that too. Just gone through. Lap time was a 1 minute 20.8 for Slade. The same for Mark Winterbottom. It was a 20.7 for Fabian Coulthard. Van Gisberg at a 20.8. Shane's now 10 seconds from the lead. 20.9 for Cam Waters, 20.9 for Scott Pye. And then the 21s for David Reynolds. Lowndes is still reasonably quicker to 20.7, remarkably with that engine drama. His teammate Jamie Winkup is next in ninth of 21 flat. And then Caruso, 21-2. That's your 10. 20 seconds covering those top 10 cars. And this is a nail-biting battle between Mark Winterbottom, Fabian Coulthard, for second on the podium. We've got eight laps remaining. They're good mates, these guys. They travel away overseas together. They like spending time together away from car racing, but this will be non-friendship battling two Ford camps. They did bang heads, I think, in the Australia Grand Prix. They did. Earlier in the year, which is always a test of your mateship. Seven to go at the end of this lap, Pat. Seven to go at the end of this lap. Maybe just wanted to know where we're at. So he's trying to assess what he has up his sleeve in adjustments or energy in the tyre that he can deploy. Okay, Brian, 11.5, Just the heart of the limiter down there, aren't they? Imagine the disharmony in the engine when that's going on. It's shaking. So it's officially 0.4 of a second. It keeps on just fluctuating. But he's found himself in the hot, awkward air behind Mark Winterbottom at the moment. There's not very much you can do about it. Interestingly, Scott McLaughlin has just done a personal best first sector in 11th position. Long way into the race to be doing that. So we'll see what this actually looks like from overview here. Further round to the right with a 6.03 second gap is Tim Slade. He'll be coming off turn nine. There he is. It shows you where they sit. And then Van Gisbergen's actually having a bit of a lonely run there at the moment now in car number 97 for Red Bull Racing. There's second and third. It's an interesting layout because when you're in those slow corners or when you drive up to the sweeper at turn five, you always have a sort of a spot on the track, maybe two or three spots where you can see the other competitors. You can see how far they're either in front or behind you. And you... You make your own little markers in terms of, should I make ground on him that lap? And there's flag marshal boxes, there's trees, there's lots of little 
identifying landmarks that give you that. This is one of them now, so as you get into turn one, beautiful change of direction corner this. A lot of sacrifice from the left to the right, and then up and over the hill. And you get a little look now, so as you come down the hill and you're going to turn four, this is where Mostert spun last year whilst leading and backed it up on the tyre wall. So right now, when you're at a sweeper, you look across and you can see where the leader is. So right now you can see Tim Slade just behind the flag marshal's box. So you get a little gauge, you go, did I make a bit of ground on him in that lap or not? It's a strange rhythmic business in that regard. Sometimes various circuits, the drivers can also see themselves on the big screens. And there are other little things that catch your eye in the crowd. There'll be a certain colour or a car or a person or a marshal or whatever. And as you start to reel the laps off in longer races, everything slows down and the tiniest little shift in the environment is noticeable, which is a really strange thing and probably hard to equate when you consider the velocity of these cars, but that's very true. These guys are totally in command of these cars at the moment. Their heart rates are low, they're fully in the zone. They understand every aspect of the car, the racetrack, and the plus and minus, minus of a hundredth of a second. He's closer now, so he's just stepping it up a notch with five laps remaining. It was a 20.7 for Slade, 20.9 for Frosty, so he was hurting a bit on that lap, and a 20.7 for Fabian Coulthard. Pressure on now. He's now right in the wheel tracks of Frosty's car. But at this end of the circuit is where Winterbottom has been powerful. And he's not missing markers at the moment, Winterbottom. He's very precise now, isn't he? He doesn't make mistakes. See there, just bumps the apex, bumps the apex gets the car in. He's very good at getting the nose of the car in. He brakes the car beautifully on the way to the corner. Very steady with his throttle application on the exit. Very patient with the way he does that. You never see big slides from Mark Winterbottom. He's got beautiful car control. Look how straight he drove the car out of there. And he made ground. He made two or three car lengths in that zone from seven, eight, and nine. Well, at the start of the lap, it was just over two tenths of a second. Now it's back to half a second again. So little bit of an air gap there for him. Nothing that would allow you to relax, though. And physically, with the resurfacing of this track, it will have made this place more arduous on the drivers. Because the tyre doesn't degrade, and normally at this time of the race they'd be doing 25s, they're now doing 20s. That's how much faster it is. Fastest guy then was Slade, 20.7 on screen, 20.9 for Winterbottom, and 21.1 for Fabian. So his burst the previous lap may have hurt him slightly on the subsequent lap. Now he's trying to reel him back down again. Van Gisbergen is in fourth position for Red Bull Racing Australia. Cam Waters for Monster Energy is at fifth. Then it's Pye, Reynolds, Lowndes, Wind Cup, Caruso. That is the 10. And this is one of the corners to be more physically demanding on the drivers. You're in the corner for a long time. Then the car slides from one way to the other. Then you've got to break the car beautifully, get it to the apex, modulate. The amount of throttle on the exit, not too much wheel spin. Sacrifice the left-hander so that you can get a nice run to this right-hander. And beautiful straight exit. Use that little curve on the outside like a motocross berm. There's so much to do at this place. It's so complex, Murph. Oh, mate, I'm just so impressed. This drive by Mark Winterbottom so far. I mean, you look when he last stopped, which was back at lap 24, but he didn't change tyres at that point. He'd already been on these ones for a few laps before that. So. He has been doing an amazing job considering where Fabian Coulthard is and how much life he's had in those tyres. This is a, a pretty champion drive, isn't it, boys? It certainly is. He stopped on lap 19 for the tyre part of his stops, Murph. And for Fabian, it was on lap 43. At that stage, I didn't think he'd climb back because I didn't think there'd be a big enough difference between the tyre performance, but proved me wrong. And he's well on the podium, but I'm, I'm not as convinced that he can actually take that next step now because of the strength of the way in which Winterbottom's car is working up in those U-turns at six, seven, eight, nine. He's buying himself the cushion he needs at the other end where you're vulnerable down at turn 11. That's right, and what Greg Murphy was saying, not just about the length of time on the tire, the reason that Mark Winterbottom's been able to keep the lap speed up and to drive it so well is because he's driving it so accurately. He's got it stopped, he gets it turned nicely, drives it straight off the exit. There's Brad Jones and his son, Macaulay, who's doing a great job in the development series. Also as a budding young driver and 
his family, this Brad Jones, Kim Jones family, are uh, hardcore racers. They are a racing group. There's all the guys there. Look, look at the level of frustration. They're all knees wobbling and stressed by it. Just want it over. <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. Finish. Can you stop this pain now, please? <laughs> We're close to the end of this one. Race 11 of the championship, the Woodstock Winton Super Sprint. And the gap's opening now, second to third. Slade's got a margin of six and a half seconds. It's three quarters of a second between these two. A different angle for us to view them running up the hill in the S bend at turns two and three. It actually looks like a door skin missing off uh, James Courtney's car there before as he's come back in and out then on the pit lane just in front of us. Winterbottom's actually just recorded, believe it or not a personal best first sector <laughs> so that's how hard he's pushing trying to do something to hold that second spot it's going to be important in his championship accumulation but right now these guys have got a sniff of putting a back-to-back -back victory together what a great performance for tim slade 30 years of age converted a pole to a win race 10 yesterday gently on the steering wheel when it happens, Greg Murphy's down there. I think Kim's changed shirts. <laughs> I, I saw him earlier in the day and he was Team BOC at that stage, so he's a fair weather sailor. Fair he's a enough good winner. Turn. He's a good winner. <laughs> turn 12. And it's now. Last lap, mate, last lap. Three kilometres remaining. One turn done. 11 to go. Another. It's 10 to go. 6.7 seconds. Slow it down. Yeah, slow it down. He had a big slide coming out of turn two. And enjoy it. This is what he's worked for. He was Formula Ford runner-up in 2006. Privateers Cup champion in the development series back in 2008. We saw signs of this in 2011 when he was runner-up at the Queensland Raceway in the 300k race there. And in 2012 with Stone Brothers, we described him frequently as the best of the rest. After Triple Eight and what was then known as Ford Performance Racing. But he's had his battle since then as he's moved around between teams. It's no reflection on those teams. It's a hard game to put all the elements together to be able to make a victory click. He's got two corners remaining now, and it looks like he's going to do it again. He'll join McLaughlin as the only dual winner of 2016 so far. One corner remaining now for Tim Slade. What a brilliant victory this has been for him. He's oh, going to get yeah, home man. by more than six seconds. Tim Slade, the winner. Race 11. Oh, boy. Wow. The Woodstock Winton Super Sprint goes to car number 14. Freightliner Racing, Tim Slade. Back-to-back -back victories. He's going to light them up here. That's up in front of the old pit area, the old pit straight where all the crowd are near the control tower. And what a superb performance over the weekend by Tim Slade and Brad Jones Racing. Yeah, what an, what an incredible result. That's two in a row. I mean, one's amazing to dominate the weekend like you guys have done. And it's a team effort, as we know, mate. Congratulations. Thanks, Merv. It's a fantastic day. I mean, you know, qualifying didn't quite roll the way we would have hoped this morning, but, uh, you know, certainly felt we had a very fast car, and for us to be able to, you know, get that strategy right at the end, and, you know, we made a call early, we turned the whole strategy around, and, you know, to Andrew, Julian, Tom, and all the boys, fantastic job, and um, worked out really well. We knew that it'd be critical to get out in front of Frosty or around him, with a much fresher tyre and it just, you know, worked out perfectly. It did work out perfectly. I think uh, maybe uh, based on uh, what will be happening out there in a minute with, uh, with Tim, you might have to rebuild this engine at the end of this one. I think the burnout's going to be pretty good. Yeah, well, that's OK. I'm not bothered about that. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> First time in his life he's not been bothered about spending a dime, Money. Brad Jones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his nose is growing. Tim Slade. Mark Winterbottom, Fabian Coulthard, congratulations, great drives all. 6.6 seconds, the official margin between Tim and Mark Winterbottom. And then 0.6 it was in the final analysis as Tim lights it up between Frosty and Fabian, who did a great job to get on the podium. <laughs> Lunatic. Okay, he's, he's off, off the, the road. road. Oh, 
off. Where is he? That's how we do it in Albury. That's how we do it in Albury, just said. I bet you, Jamie Wincup did that a few years ago in Tassie by accident. I think that one was actually deliberate. They're doing it in the dirt and uh, out of fuel, I think. Looks like Moffat's actually just uh, giving Rick a bit of a hand to get him back. That's nice sportsmanship from yes. James Moffat, the ex Nissan factory driver. And this is how we do it in Albury. That's a great line by <laughs> Tim Slade. <laughs> We're a farming community. Check this out. In the dirt. <laughs> Doing it in the dirt. What a superb performance, Neil, by this young man this weekend. Game changer yesterday. And a repeat performance in the 200k race today. And that's the burnout. That's the only thing he didn't do through the course of this race was wheel spin. He controlled the tyre usage very well. He was very measured. Good strategy application by Brad Jones Racing. And another win for the 30-year-old from South Australia. And as I said yesterday, the 73rd winner of all time in our sport. Well, the lap speed was very, very flat. And this is the last lap battle between David Reynolds and Scott Pye, who's made a mistake and allowed David to sneak on by. So that's a critical one. There have been a couple of gift wrap positions today with ribbons. <laughs> so uh, that was very easy. Slade, Winterbottom, Coulthard. That is your podium and up to the U-Bet number one position into the victory circle. For the second day in a row comes Tim Slade. Yesterday he just sat there and soaked it up with a, almost a look of disbelief on his face while he tried to comprehend what was going on. He's a bit more comfortable having rehearsed that now. <laughs> Exactly right. His dad was there yesterday, his sister Lucy. Very emotional day for the family. And Slade now, the local hero, the Brad Jones team just up the road. Fist pumps for young Tim. And Mark Winterbottom alongside. What a great drive by Frosty. And there we go. And also. It's always good to see the guys appreciating each other's work. And here's the super slow-mo, and the impressive thing for me was just constant control for him, no emotion in his driving, calmly asking questions about where he was at and how the strategy was playing, driving the car straight. The lap speed trace for him looks very, very flat, very few mistakes, if any. Let's get down there now and enjoy the moment. Tim Slade, you had to wait a couple of races, but for the second day in a row, you find yourself in the U-Bet victory lane. Congratulations, another outstanding victory in the Supercars Championship. Oh, what do I say to that? <laughs> what was it, 226 starts and then two in one weekend and a pole and quickest in practice. Um, yeah, man, I hope, uh, hope this isn't a dream. Um, hope I stay awake, <laughs> don't awake, wake up. Awake. It's good, pinch myself. But no, again, massive thanks to, uh, to Freightliner and all the BJR Racing crew, um, BJR Racing Racing, BJR crew. Um, yeah, again, couldn't have done it without them, obviously. They're giving me a, a rocket for the second day in a row. So um, yeah, man, that's mental. It's crazy. A near on perfect weekend. I think it's officially been declared a public <laughs> a public holiday in Albury tomorrow. We're just we're just making that up, but I think it will be fine. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do it. Who's who's the mayor of Albury? Does he he or she call the public holidays? So we're calling it. We, well, we'll definitely be knocking the debrief back. That was meant to be tomorrow, and I might have to uh, to stay a day later and help the boys clean the car because I always said I wanted to do some dirt donuts when I won a race. So. Um, yeah, I think that's how they do it in Albury. We absolutely loved it. Enjoy the champagne and enjoy the celebrations. Mark Winterbottom, seventh straight podium here at Winton. Something about this place and you love it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, qualifying 10th was average, but um, the strategy was awesome. We just kept hitting our numbers and so proud of the, the team. So, um, you know, congrats again to the BJR boys. Maybe hit the bottle, I'll give them some free alcohol <laughs> or something. But, um, yeah, good to see them win and uh, good to fire it on to second, you know. A podium today was probably unrealistic and to get one is... He's really, really cool. I'm wrapped. We've got a couple of weekends off before we head to our next event in Darwin. You go there as the championship leader. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is awesome. That's 
course. Um, you know, it's a long season, but uh, to get to the front any time is, is really good. And today, to salvage the position when we qualified 10th, um, that's what it's all about. So um, we'll keep pushing on and keep trying to get results. It's awesome. Enjoy the champagne. Fabian Coulthard, there was a little question mark with the, uh, the, the start at the beginning for yourself. You probably don't even know that, but you're on the podium. Congratulations. Yeah, it's been uh, not a bad day. Uh, awesome recovery um, after yesterday, but... You know, we tried our best, and uh, today third was good, the best we could do. But you know, I'd like to say uh, my thoughts with Josh's family. Josh is my number one, and you know he's had a bit of a family drama um, throughout this week. So um, you know, our thoughts are with them. I know that um, you're going on holiday with Mark Winterbottom. That battle got pretty spirited at the end. Yeah, look, uh, you know we can still go away and be friends, so that helps. <laughs> Enjoy the celebrations. Well done. All right, cheers. Well, what a weekend, mate. So, great way to finish for you guys. I know how hard you were working from Friday, yeah, getting this car that. sorted out. Well, I was, part, I was sort of in there. I wasn't helping too much, but, mate, you must feel really good. That was a great performance. The car was strong all the way through. Yeah, man, my car was fantastic. As soon as, it, as, soon as the uh, light, red light went out, man, my car was on, on song. So, um, you know, from 17 to finish 6, it's a brilliant job. And, you know, I've made some, made some errors out there that I've got to fix myself. But, man, you know, really, really happy. And really happy for Slade to win as well. That's awesome for him. Good on you, buddy. Well done. Thanks, man. Thanks for your expertise. Well, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think that helped one, but it was all you guys. Good, man. It was all good. Thanks. Yeah, that's a nice drive for David. He ended up 20 seconds from the lead, but to come home sixth from that qualifying position in the Penride entry was very impressive. But once again, we're talking about Tim Slade. What a performance. Just under seven seconds the margin for him over Mark Winterbottom and Fabian Coulthard, who's off to watch the Indy 500 with Roger Penske coming up at the end of the month. Shane Van Gisbergen for Red Bull Racing Australia and then Cam Waters, David Reynolds, Scotty Pye. That little mistake let David through at the end. And then further down, we've got Lowndes, Wind Cup, Caruso in the 10. This is the second page of information. McLaughlin through Mostert. Gee, Chaz, what a day for him when you've got so much speed and it doesn't translate. Very, very frustrating situation. So right now, for the second day in a row, we're going to celebrate big with Tim Slade. It's time for the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Woodstock Winton Super Sprint Race 11 podium. In first place, for the second day in a row, representing Freightliner Racing, Tim Slade. Our second place driver from the Bottolo Racing Team, it's Mark Winterbottom. And in third place from DJR Team Penske, Fabian Coulthard. Representing our Castrol Edge winning team from Freightliner Racing, it's Tom Wettenhall. <laughs> to make the trophy presentation now, third place from the operations manager of Winton Motor Raceway, Mr. Wayne Williams. The second place trophy to be awarded by the member for North Victoria, Jacqueline Symes. Awarding the Castrol Edge winning team trophy, Chris Lewis-Williams, Chief Executive Officer, Winton Motor Raceway. And our winner's trophy from Mr Luke Bertram, from our naming rights partner, Woodstock Bourbon. Ladies and gentlemen, what a weekend. The 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, Woodstock Winton Super Sprint Race 11 podium. A great news story watching Tim Slade enjoy that. He came into the championship series with Paul Morris back in 2009 and he's rapidly closing in on these guys at the sharp end of the points table. There it is on the bottom left of your screen. It's 27 points between Mark Winterbottom and Scott McLaughlin with the teammates Wincup and Lowndes still there at the top. They're only separated by three points at the moment and uh, there is Tim Slade. I made mention of him closing inside the top ten now. So great performance for him to put together a max points weekend in the Freightliner race entry top 10 at the bottom of that list includes Michael Caruso wonderful to see everybody at Brad Jones Racing enjoying those celebrations but check out the highlights now for race number 11 and we got weirded out right at the very beginning on this one because we weren't hundred percent sure whether or not there was a false start for Coulthard based on the flinch from Mostert it wasn't the case they looked carefully at race control and then it was all clear and literally right from the moment it started they boxed on hard people flying every which way this is Andre Heimgartner getting roughed up at turn 12 more of that stuff between Waters and Pye at turn 3 Craig Lowndes had one of those difficult weekends and then as different things happened around the track some people were trapped in traffic they reacted and came in and pitted other people reacted when there was a safety car it was a narrow escape from 
a contact on departure between Mostert and Tander. A little moment here between Aaron Russell and Tim Blanchard at turn two, and then subsequent to that, we had a problem with the front left corner of Aaron's car. Lexus RCF safety car came out, bunched the field up. Rick Kelly was under pressure at one stage. Here we are on board with Mark Winterbottom came down the inside of Craig Lowndes at turn three. That proved to be pretty costly as he toured the gravel out there. Big frustration for his engineer, Ludo Lacroix. He knows that track position is king at a racetrack like this one. Pressure here between Scott McLaughlin and Jason Bright, who rotated. How's that for a shot? And then Bridie, very close to swiping the nose of the Nissan Aldemar of Todd Kelly that was about to round him up at turn seven. Mark Winterbottom was the guy that we were focusing on from a strategic viewpoint because they came in and tried to process as much fuel as early as they could, but that meant a very long stint on tyres for Frosty. Again, off the road down at Turn 11 in the Team Vortex entry was Craig Lowndes. Grant McPherson and Mark Dutton in the Red Bull Garage having a discussion. Brighton Mostert at it between Turns 1 and 2. A difficult day gets uglier for Chaz Mostert. Craig Lowndes tried to do the right thing in the way in which he rounded up James Courtney through Turn 5, but it was dirty on the outside line. He couldn't control the car out there in the gravel and he slipped off the road, dropped more spots. Meantime, with really consistent form and just blazing on, looking super strong, it was Tim Slade. What a performance. He was able to control the race throughout, came home with a margin of 6.6 .6 seconds in the end, and he's put together two wins. He's waited all his career to win a V8 supercar race, and now he's won two of them. Winner bottom in second place, followed then by Fabian Coulthard. So how's that for a performance? The crowd loving it. We talked up the fact that these boys are from within this region. Fantastic performance. And there he is, it's barely broken into a sweat after something just over an hour and a half of very hard work. Well, our next supercar event is going to take us all the way up to the top end to Hidden Valley Raceway in Darwin. That's coming up on June 17, 18 and 19. It's certainly a big departure from where we've been down here in Victoria. It's a popular win and it'll be a popular destination when we meet you next time. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship from Winton. We'll look forward to your company next time round.